Red Hot Comic Book Movie News. Defenders of the Earth. Defenders. The Weekly Planet. The Weekly Planet. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday. With me, as always, you threw me off there because you gave me a week and a gun. That's right. Uh, but it was really enthusiastic. It was like It a, wasn't a threat. No, it was just like, good work. But to be clear, I got a big smile, but I cocked the gun, so it's ready to go. <laughs> cool, it is. So it was a threat. It's a Chekhov's finger gun. Perfect. It might go off at any moment. Uh, Nick Mason is here because he wants to also celebrate the spookiest time of the year. Very and I'm spooky. not just talking about tax time, Mason. Oh. So like, this went quickly. I feel like I didn't get to say it enough this year. <laughs> you think? No. I think you just have fonder memories of previous years. Is that what it is? You're just in. You're embellishing them in your mind. Okay. Where we've just done oh, just a Halloween that lasts forever. Exactly. You've just in your mind. You've just done episodes where I cannot get a single word in because you're just like <laughs> I'm not talking. I'm not just talking about tax time. I'm not just talking about tax. Wait. I'm not just talking about t- like it's just whole episodes, <laughs> and in your mind everybody's loving them. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do the letters segment. I'm like James. There's just people emailing <laughs> in to say they love your joke about tax time, and I can't. There's no other letters, so I guess yeah. I'll just read them out. <laughs> you read them all out. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Mm. Uh, but you know, because it is the spookiest time of year. Go on. I'm not just talking about tax time. We're going to talk. What are you talking about? The spookiest time of the year. Wait, what are you talking about? It's Halloween. Be specific. It's oh, Halloween. it is Halloween. It yeah. will be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, once again, thank you for your constant reminders because I did do my tax return this you're week. You're welcome. Otherwise, I would have forgotten. Yeah. Also, this joke only works in Australia, mm. but I think I'd do it anyway. There, like, must no be, matter, there must be another place in the world where tax time is around now. Is around now. Yeah. But anyway, we're going to talk about Sorex, which we know has uh, been out for a while, mm-hmm. but we didn't get a chance to see it, That's and true. Five Nights at Freddy's. Which is fr- fresh out Freddy, of the oven. It's, f- f- it's fresh out of the pizza oven, isn't it? It certainly is, yeah. When you think about it. We're going to also be talking about the death of a couple of bloody legends, mate, uh, that mm. happened this week. We're going to talk some updates on the uh, the actor's strike. We know the, the, the writer's strike has been resolved, but the actor's mm. one is ongoing. That's right. And, and there is a, now an even bigger knock-on effect to movies that are being postponed that were previously not going to be postponed. That's right. And it's shocking news. And and let me tell you this, James, I also have a piece of uh, of news for our segment Oh, no, that's devastating news. Oh, good. Yeah, so we can, we'll can we get to I love that. that. Yeah. Uh, then we're going to talk about some Spider-Man stuff with Spider-Man 4 and Venom 3. We're going to talk Thor 4. We're going to talk about some updates to the dead. Thor 4? Thor 4. Thor 5. Okay. Well, I can't misspeak. I'm on no, show. No, no, you can't. You're no. right. Uh, you've ruined, you, James, you've ruined enough of our listeners' good graces by those episodes where you constantly just said... I'm not just talking about tax. No, they love them. Oh, also, I'm, I'm, I'm over here at greenbacktaxservices.com, tax deadlines by country. You ready for this? Here we go. Albania, April 30. Ooh. Argentina, April 15. Come on, man. April 15. What are we doing? Australia, October 31. Woo! Brazil, April 30. I'm going to keep doing this. Brazil. Canada, April 30. Oh, Canada. Chile, April 30. What's happening? China, June 30. June. Probably because of the Chinese New Year's different. Sure, okay. Costa Rica, February 15th. Jurassic Park. I'm going to skip a few. Italy, November 30. Outrageous. That'd be What's right. that? What That'd are we be, doing? Yeah, what are you doing? Classic Italians. Yeah. Ireland, October 31. Woo! So it's the spookiest time of year in Ireland. And they invented the Halloween. That's right. Or something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, some say Ireland uh, started it, but Australia perfected it. Ooh. And United, nothing happened in the middle. United Kingdom, October 31 as well. Oh, my God. Get ready for this one, James. South Africa, determined each year by government notice. That's annoying. That sounds annoying. Don't do that. Yeah. What are you doing? Anyway. Hope everybody enjoyed that. Me too. Little little uh, little detour into international tax deadlines. Yeah, maybe you moved you moved countries, mm-hmm. and you're like, "Well, where's my tax lot?" Now you know. Yeah. If if your country was read out, otherwise you have to look up. That's yourself. right. Yeah. That's right. If your country wasn't read out, we do not consider you important. <laughs> New Zealand, July seven. Come on, man. July. What are we 7? doing? I just need to let Ollie out because you're in a, in a flutter. In a flutter. Okay, great. Well, I'm not in a flutter. I'm perfectly composed. You do seem perfectly composed. Ah! <laughs> wow, who I was that? I actually spoke too soon then. Because yeah. you're, I don't know if you noticed. Who you're, spoke you're, then? You're composed, yeah. Mason, I'm in front of you. <laughs> ah! Ah! Uh, actually, I was in the middle of telling, saying what's happening. The oh, time great. goes below for this. Yeah, Daredevil something. They're doing Daredevil. Uh, an, update on the fanta- and the, an update on the Fantastic Beast series, which I know we are big fans of and cannot mm, wait to absolutely. find out what is next. Is it nothing? Yeah, yeah. Nice. But we'll talk specifically what kind of nothing we're getting. Probably another game. I bet that there'll be another. There'll be yeah, another that did well. Place. Though apparently, like people don't like it. Initially, they're like, "Wow, exploring Hogwarts," and then people are like, "Actually, this is boring." But I don't know. I didn't play it, and mm. I won't because I hate open world games, and that's their fault. <laughs> Time codes below. 
Uh, Mason, yes. Richard Roundtree passed away did, that's last true. week at age 81. Uh, he most famously, though not exclusively, he was known for playing John Shaft yeah. from the Shaft uh, film series. Now, now, according to THR, this was apparently after a battle with pancreatic cancer. He was also a breast cancer survivor oh. uh, in the 90s, uh, which he's publicly spoken about, and I believe that helped ha- helped raise awareness because breast cancer is something that can also affect men, mm. obviously. But in addition to, like, the three Shaft movies he did in the 70s, he also did a Shaft TV series at that time. There was a 2000 sequel with Samuel L. Jackson and Christian Bale, and then there was not a very good sequel in the 2019 one. With, called Woke Shaft or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah, about yeah. Or whatever. I quite like Woke Shaft. I, it was bad. I know you did, yeah. But uh, he's he, excellent, always yeah, yeah. good, but not the only thing. He's the principal in Brick. I was going to say he's the principal in Brick, the uh, the Ryan uh, Johnson mm, movie, which really is very good. Really good. Johnson Brick. Yeah. So he's in Speed Racer. He's in Seven, apparently. Oh. Incredible career. And I think it's – Shaft is such a formative character as well, like the first of his kind or I guess that hit mainstream. I don't yeah. know the specifics, mm-hmm. but yeah. Apparently, but all the counts a very nice man. And, you know, 81 is a pretty good innings. And what a legacy, you know. That's true. You got to play, like, a beloved hero, like, over decades. That's true, That's yeah. That's super cool. Mm. I don't get to be beloved by anybody. <laughs> and I should be, is my point. Oh, you think? Yeah. This is going to turn into a rant about how nobody <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> loves you and you may as well just die. Yeah, exactly. Oh, no, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's what I want to no, hear. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and, of course... Matthew Perry passed away at age yeah, 54. That's a shock. Yeah, I know, right? And apparently uh, cardiac arrest in his hot tub. According, according to early reports, there wasn't any substances found like in, uh-huh. around him. But, of course, he very publicly known that he has a long or had a long history of substance abuse like during Friends. Like, I mean, he was in and out of it over the decades, but he's he had a myriad of health problems as a result of that. Like yeah. addiction like really – Really tore him up. Do, do a number on you, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So 54, obviously, really, really young. And, of course, most famously known for Friends, the whole Nine Yards movies he did with Bruce That's Willis. True. 17 again, which I think is a genuinely great movie. I don't know uh-huh. if you've seen it. I, maybe. Pretty fun. Okay, yeah. right. Mm-hmm. Where Zac Efron plays a young Matthew Perry. Ah, that. yes. Uh, he's in, he pops up in Scrubs. That's true. Good in Scrubs, yeah. yeah. Uh, he's also in the uh, – th- this is a cruel thing to mention, but I like it. <laughs> okay. So it's not supposed to be a joke, though. It is kind of a joke. Him and Jennifer Aniston did the Microsoft Windows 1995 video guide. Uh, I don't know if I you've see. seen any of that. I have not, but, it's a, but I'm sort of vaguely aware yeah, of it. Yeah, and I, I, it's probably available, but I'd love to know, like, what they got paid to do that. Probably quite a lot. Yeah. Um. So that's, that's a bit of fun right there. So, yeah, you know, two people who had very different bodies of work, but yeah. equally – also, you know, I went to school impactful. with Justin Trudeau. Did you know that? Really? Yeah. You love Justin Trudeau. I don't. You love, love that him. thing that he did. No, I don't. Which like, one am I talking I about? I don't love anything that he's done ever. <laughs> I don't love it. Wherever the mindset, aren't we? In most countries, if you become the president or the prime minister or whatever, afterwards they should just put you in jail. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's just war crimes and yeah, 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 you should, know, yeah. atrocities and things that you're ignoring. Yeah. So you just go to jail. Like you get to be president, yeah. but then you have to go to jail. And then when the next one gets elected, we go. Remember what we did to all the. Lo- we know you're not going to change what you're going to do. <laughs> they start. We, we put we put everybody else in jail. Yeah. Do what you want because you are the prime minister or whatever. Yep. But if you do what all the other guys do, we're going to put you in jail. Oh, he's doing it. He's yeah. Doing whatever. <laughs> oh, he's also uh, Matthew Perry was also um, in Fallout New Vegas. Oh, he's really? Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's, right. uh, he was a big fan of the series apparently, and he know was that? just like, "How about this?" Uh, but yeah, he's sort of um, like a robot or a. No, he's like he's like this one of the sort of primary antagonists. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that at all. Yeah. Hmm. There you go. You learn something new yeah. every single goddamn day. Mason. Now, that's devastating news, but, uh, James, I want you to um, – Oh, this is our se- famous segment. Oh, no, that's devastating that's news. That's right, in which I tell you a piece of news. Or vice versa. Uh, and uh, you then have to say, oh, no, that's devastating news. Yep. And then I have to guess whether or not you're being sarcastic. <laughs> Correct. Okay, so this is uh, this was from um, Max Landis's, uh Instagram. <laughs> okay. I did see this. Uh, and it's, it's a story he says – Forgot my laptop bag on a curb and it was stolen. Did not have find my laptop on. I have lost over 10,000 pages of writing, two novels, 61 unfinished scripts and the entirety of the five projects I was working on this year as well as last year, some of them with other writers. I do not regularly back up my computer. Get the cloud, Max Landis. I do not know how to process this loss. Now, for people who don't know, Max Landis wrote the script for the movie Bright or Orc Cop. Yes. And he's otherwise a really cool dude. Just kidding. Yeah, well, he did write a chronicle. Which mm-hmm. I think is genuinely good, mm-hmm. but yeah, he's uh, he openly sucks. Sure. And here at this show, mm-hmm. I wouldn't say we're fans. No, absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, not. Fu- fuck him and his computer. Okay, but <laughs> oh, oh no, that's devastating news. You being sucked. I am. 
Uh, Did but you unfor- find it? Yeah, unfortunately. Now that is devastating yeah. news. Yeah, well, uh, James, <laughs> wait for the prompts <laughs> if you wouldn't mind. This is how this you got the. We, you got to trust in the You're system, right? You're right. There's a process. There's an update several hours later. One of my oldest friends was so upset by seeing me heartbroken over losing my computer that she went back and searched the block I lost it on and it was handed back by a homeless person. James? That is genuinely devastating. Yes, you, 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 you're, being, you're being genuine there. <laughs> yeah. I like how specific he was. I was working on this and had this many pages and this many mm. words. Yeah. And it was this many scripts. And they were great words. They and were... actually, I'll be working on five scripts just this year. Actually, they're all as good as Star Wars, if not better than Star Wars. <laughs> God, it's good to see him out in the world, though, isn't it? You know what I love about that? That one of his oldest friends was so upset by that that she went back and searched the block. You're not going to go search the block, Max Landis? And how could he possibly? Yeah. A person that heartbroken? Yeah. You expect them to do any legwork? Mm. God. So true. My heart hurts for him. Mm. Not anymore because he got his computer back. So yeah, he's fine. He'll be so wrapped. Yeah, yeah. Also, get the cloud. What are you doing? Yeah, how You're else a is a screenwriter. Laptop? What the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. It's not one of those, like, you know that you can get like a little, if you if you're if you want to get writing. There's I want to get those, writing, Mason. You know those computers, they don't, they don't connect to the they internet. They don't anything. have anything. They're just a little word processing box. I tell you how it is. It's called a typewriter. Oh. No, but there's ones that are just a little box. No, I know what you mean. It's all internal. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you can go like on Twitter or whatever, yeah? It does have also Twitter. Oh, absolutely. If you want to just yeah, yeah. go on Twitter and have a look. <laughs> That's right. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. Because I'd want to look. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I just look at my phone, but it would be easier if it was in yeah, the computer. Yeah, I mean, it's, a little, it's like an unconnected, you're in, a, you're in a bubble, you are unconnected to the, the wider world, but it's also got Twitter. <laughs> Good. Yeah. That's right. I need to put the fan on. It's a oh. million fucking degrees in here. I think it's a normal temperature. It's not, Mason. Wow. Why is the remote outside the room with the air conditioner in it? I'll tell you in a minute. Okay. He'll tell us in a minute, folks. This is now. Th- this is this. I got to hear. Because I got to hear this far-fetched yarn. Okay, because when we built the studio, and by we, I we mean, built this studio. Yeah, Go on. Uh, Claire and I uh, got some people in. I didn't do anything on it, obviously. <laughs> it's uh, people don't know. It's two rooms. There's a front room which is bigger, mm. and I can watch stuff. And there's a walking treadmill which I quickly gave up on. But it's there. It's there. If I need it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there's a cat, and we should set it up. And we didn't. We did. it's just whatever. It was gonna be. It was gonna be a video thing. It's a whole. It's a whole yeah, thing. And we don't want to film anything. And the back room is where we record the podcast. Mm. But so there's two separate air conditioning units, right? Oh, yeah. Because okay. it's designed so you can close this area off and use the other area. Oh, yeah, nice. Like anybody's coming or going. <laughs> but that's the idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so they both have air conditioning units for that reason because this is an un um, – there's no – I was going to say mirrors. There are no mirrors. There are no mirrors. <laughs> oh, my God. There are no mirrors in this room. <laughs> and um, – and when you're in a mirrorless room, you want to have some air con. Absolutely. Because you know? otherwise you'll go crazy. <laughs> yeah, you need that illusion of air moving through. Mm. Yeah, so that's why. Well, that's a great story. Oh, and there's one remote because the other one's out of battery and I haven't changed it yet. Oh, okay. So, yeah, that's why. You happy? Is that a good enough explanation? No. Is that boring enough for you? I'm not happy and it was boring. <laughs> Now, Mason. Go on. There was uh, rumblings this week because uh, the actors' uh, strike is ongoing. Mm. And the studios were the like. The actors are at it again. They're at it again, aren't they? The studio was like, listen, if we can't resolve this soon, I think it's by the end of the month, we're basically going to put negotiations on hold until the new year because that would mean that any of their scheduled shows can't get back on track mm. enough on time to continue through. Yes. Every, but apparently everything shuts down like November, December anyway. Yeah. So it's mm-hmm. like, I don't know what kind of threat that is. Sure, yeah. Anyway. But so. they're probably because well, they're probably like, well, all our, all our underlings have to do work mm. in the interim there. We don't do any work. Yeah, no, of As course As executives, not. we don't do anything. But just it, it's a vague and empty threat mm. uh, to kind of move things along. And at time of recording, I think the negotiations are still ongoing. We haven't got to that point. But there mm-hmm. still have been some ramifications. Because it, of course, is time for delays but good. Yes. Because of that, the strikes that are happening. <laughs> or the singular strike. Oh, no, there's also – no, there's a singular strike. But there's some other rumblings. Oh, there's, there's, always, some tummy there's rumblings always rumblings. Going, you know? There's always tummy rumblings in that industry because people are hungry for justice. Exactly. Decent pay. Yeah, but we also just want to be clear. We're impartial. We see both sides. That's exactly right. We're on side of both yeah, the yeah. people, the working class and That's the corporations. Right. Also, it's good to be above it yeah. and just be like, um, I can see faults here. Yeah. yeah. Also, I, I read fairly recently after the, the writer's strike ended, you know how we mentioned that Drew Carey was paying for everybody's mm. lunch at the – I think it was at a Bob's Big Boy. Stopped? Well, he did because the – the writers got what they typical, were. yeah, typical, typical Hollywood, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he paid like half a million dollars. Oh my god, Carey, and he's got that hole in his hand. You can drop a coin through. He's in community. <laughs> ah, that's <laughs> it's not right. a real thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, um, good for him. I agree. Really cool. Half a million. Oh my god. So Mason, go on. One of the things that's happened as a result of this uh, THR reporting that Mission Impossible: Dead Reckoning Part Two is getting two things. Oh yes. 
It's getting a delay. Mm. It's also getting a retitle. Yeah, all the yeah the 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 the, the sequel. Yeah, it's going to be called not going to be called Dead Reckoning Part Two. It's going to be called mm. something else. I think it's because of the Ethan Hunt's Big Adventure. Oh, he's doing it about the Big Adventure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow, wow. That's In great. this one, he acquires Pee Wee Herman's magical bike. Does he? Yeah, and he rides a cl- off a off a cliff. Is he okay? No, he dies. Cool. That's cool. Yeah, that's stunts. Yeah, and that's stunts. Mm. That's what we say in the biz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's called. It's called Mission Impossible. Elsa's really dead. Wink. Oh my god. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Elsa. Elsa. Oh. <laughs> but it says Elsa's really <laughs> dead, and then brackets. I mean Elsa. <laughs> you remember, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then it says wink. Wink. So this is going from June 28th of 2024 to May 23rd of 2025. Mm. They filmed a lot of this. I think a lot of the stunt work. And we yeah. saw the plane thing at the very least. Maybe he's in the biplane and he's oh, like, yeah. see you in the movies. Yeah, so, right, yeah, right. The right. plane peels uh-huh. off or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See you in the movies, everyone. <laughs> I'm going to crash this into a theatre. Um, and the title uh, changes because the last Mission Impossible, it kind of underperformed. Yeah. And I think that's also because it then – like the week after it came out, or maybe two weeks after, Barbie and Oppenheimer, Barbie and Oppenheimer just wiped it away. Yeah, mm-hmm. gone. Yeah, um, and it was—it's a shame because I thought it was a. Pretty yeah, good and one. I think yeah. as we've previously mentioned, it is—it it is considered to be up there with one of the most expensive movies made yes. of all time. But that is because they paid everybody through COVID. Yeah, even that's though they right, were completely yeah. shut down. Yeah, they paid all the cast and crew to just not have to. Yeah. you know. Die of COVID. Don't have to die of COVID, yeah, which I think was nice of them, which factors in. So, you know, yeah. but, and so, you know, it, it, it really underperformed. But if you take out that, which I guess you can't because it still costs people money. You're saying it really overperformed. No, I'm saying it very much overperformed. Oh, I think it was like something like mm. a $300 million movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I guess the, the what, I mean, what is probably going to happen now is that I just. Dead Reckoning Part One. When it goes, you know, in digital, they'll just. I think it's just digital as well. They'll just yeah. call it Dead Reckoning. Yeah, that's so, true. Yeah, and they'll, you know, they'll probably change the title in in you know Photoshop. In Photoshop <laughs> or MS Paint. Yeah, they might. Know? Yeah. yeah. What font do you think they'll use? Comic Sans. Yeah, I think they'd use the one that's that very looks like a robot font because of the um because there's robots because of the AI. Sure, sure, sure. AI in it. Yeah. Or it could be a guy. Might we still be a theories. guy. Mm, yeah. yeah. Very good. Oh, this one's bad news as well. Um, on, I'm still again. I'm still pulling for it to be Emilio Estevez. Oh my somehow. god! Yeah. Oh my god! Right, Venom three. Whoa! Let there lo- be more Venom. Yeah, it's been pushed back. It's now set for release in July twelfth of twenty twenty four. I didn't know they were going to do a third one. Uh, does that is that even possible? <laughs> what what part? Yeah, I feel like this that it's going to be like that's really soon, and I'm pretty sure it's not filming, or it has. God, let me have a look. Oh, here we go. The direct. Yes. Venom 3 gets a concerning release date. Brackets oh. reports. This is by the direct. Blah, 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 blah. Already commenced filming in June. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Concerning update. Facing Very a series concerning. of setbacks. And it sounds like we'll be hitting July 11, 2024. But, well, the blah. James, speak to the back of the room. No. Okay. Um, okay, James, second option. Mumble to yourself as you um, read. Um, 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 okay, um, great. Um, anyway, so yeah, I would say that's probably not going to happen was the point of that because mm-hmm. they haven't finished filming it because the strike uh, happened, was it? Yeah, the actors one at least was in July, so they wouldn't have been able to finish. Have you talked about Venom 3 on this podcast? Juno Temple's in it. Probably she- another. he fights another Venom potentially. Oh, great. Good. A third Venom. <laughs> Terrific, I love Fourth that. Fourth Venom? How many Venoms were in the first Venom? There was quite a few from memory. Was there? Yeah. Huh. God, what a world. <laughs> I reckon he should fight somebody other than Venom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like a Venom? No. No. That's yeah. you. I reckon he should fight Carnage. Mm, again. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And not like from a different universe. No, just, just Woody Harrelson again. Okay, yeah, I'm great with yeah, I'm yeah. great and cool with that. Yeah, yeah. You thought I died in the last one, maybe. I think I died, but I'm back. <laughs> also, that British guy as the cop turns up. Stephen Graham is like, I've got the Venom abilities. Remember? No, I don't at remember. The end, at he's all. like, I've got the Venom abilities. Huh. And it hints towards a Tommy great... from Snatch. Tommy from Snatch. Great. Yeah. Anyway, the this guy is what, from Boiling Point. Probably. Yeah, okay. My Time to Shine Hello on Twitter said apparently that Tom Holland's Spider-Man will fight Venom, brackets, sooner than you think. Huh. So it could be in that movie or a different movie. And speaking of Spider-Man, mm-hmm. this is by Daniel Richmond on Twitter who says Spider-Man 4 will have a late 2024 production start and a late, which would mean, it seems to be, if you do the math, <laughs> I that's refuse. a late 2025. I only do and, maths in my household. Oh, that is an Australian expression. Or arithmetic. Oh, yeah. Hmm. My prick, what do you think of that? Oh, that was good. And uh, thank you. And a late, I would say, like, if you do the calculations, that's a late 2025 release mm. at the earliest. Yeah. So 
no new Spider-Man till at least end of 2025. Yeah. In, a, in its own movie. He might show up and something and go, hello, I'm here, it's a multiverse, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know yeah. they're doing things yeah, at the moment. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. They're doing all of those things. Mm. Mm. And speaking of scripts from Daniel Richman, he says, Thor 5 is in the works. Marvel is said to be searching for a new director to helm the film, meaning Taika Waititi will not return. Oh, no, that's devastating news. Mm, you don't mean that. I Which don't. is not surprising. Mm. Uh, I don't think it underperformed. But it certainly wasn't beloved. No, that's yeah, true. it didn't. It, I think it did okay, like numbers wise, mm. it did all right. Yeah. But yeah, it wasn't. Um, yeah, but I mean that that could be a little bit of a uh, sort of Michael Bay Transformer syndrome. Exactly, like, they, they do quite well, and then the next ones massively underperform because yeah. people are like, well, we didn't like that last one. I would like to see like a a more kind of. Yeah, I think you could uh, you reinvent him again. You make it more serious and yeah. epic and Viking, and you'd maybe go in that direction. Do or can you, you not at this yeah. point? Can you not, please? Can you not? Do you think you do a story about him raising his daughter? Because he's got a daughter now, if you recall. They might have to. Yeah. Because that's what they wrote in the last that's, one. I mean, but they could also just be like, she's off with her uncle. She fell off a bridge. She fell off a bridge. And not the rainbow bridge, a regular, regular bridge. Regular bridge, yeah. Yeah, and she got swept away in a river. <laughs> Right. And caught up in a fjord. And Heimdall can't find her. Couldn't say a damn thing. That's right. Yeah. Well, she went under a bridge, man. Because Heimdall's dead, I think, still. Yeah, he's also dead, yeah. <laughs> and little Heimdall couldn't see him either because he got his head stuck in that portal or yeah. whatever. Yeah, <laughs> true, yeah. <laughs> oh, so much. Well, oh, just a wealth of lore to draw on exactly. from that last movie. I mean, imagine being able to build on such storytelling. Yeah. Entering such a rich universe. Oh, my God. Standing on the shoulders of giants. <laughs> Literally. Anyway, I thought it was fine, Thor 4, honestly. I hated it. Yeah, I know no, you did. Yeah. I thought it was all right. I thought there were some good elements that did not necessarily mesh well together. They did mm. like eight stories. Sure did. The one thing. Mm. They did Lady Thor and they did Gore the God Butcher. Yeah. And a bunch of other stuff probably that I can't remember. Oh, they did um, They did Valkyrie's the Mare. Oh, Valkyrie's the Mare. That was yep, a good one. They did that one. They did Baskin Robbins at Thor. Yeah, they did. Thor yeah. Shop. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah, they did Offensive Ice Cream Shop storyline. <laughs> Because Thanos killed everyone That's in right. the yeah, universe. Yeah. Well, they came back. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine again, yeah. It's fine again. Mm. Uh, this is also interesting, I feel, but feel free to say otherwise. Go on. It's by THR. Apparently, oh, you know, we know about this, but Daredevil Born Again, which is a series that they're currently making, I think they're doing like 12 or was it 18 episodes of Daredevil or something? Wasn't that the too idea? Too many. Yeah. Well, anyway, it might probably <laughs> be less. It's the incorrect now. number. That's all I know. It's too many. Six is not enough. Whatever they're doing is too many. Yeah. Just do what we say. Yeah. <laughs> In the middle. Yeah. We check. haven't told you what it is yet, but do it in the middle. <laughs> yeah. How many episodes is it? Let me check. I remember it being like an unusually large amount of uh, episodes for a Disney Plus show. Uh, mm, yeah. Bum, mm. bum, 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 bum. But maybe that's, you know, maybe that's maybe that's the one. The first season was expected con- to consist of 18 episodes prior to the creative overhaul. Um, that could change, though. Anyway, speaking of, so they're re-hol- re- overhauling the whole thing. We talked about this a few weeks back, but basically – Marvel realized that a lot of their movies, and in particular TV shows, they weren't using showrunners or writers. Oh, they just realized that. They were like, hang on yeah. a minute. This has worked out so well so far, but then, you know, we've just decided, you know, mm. apropos of nothing, on our own, of our own volition, we should get some showrunners in. You can't wing that much content. Oh. You can maybe do it for two or three movies That's a, year. a t-shirt. Yeah. You can't wing that much content The <laughs> Weekly Planet. We prove them wrong every week, don't we? We certainly do. Yeah. Uh, and it's us at the back. It's like little cartoon versions of us looking sad. Yeah, no doubt. Mm. But the um, so normal. But I, I look good, don't I? Hit it. Mm, you like look I about, look good for my age. I mean, you look how you normally look. <laughs> okay. You know, you look. That's how you look. All right. Yeah. Because sometimes I feel okay huh. about how I look. That's interesting. <laughs> anyway, it's being it's real- really interesting. <laughs> it's really interesting. Yeah. It's being retooled. Because apparently it's like directionless and brain dead okay. and, and boring. And apparently a lot of the episodes is Matt Murdock emphasizing how he couldn't be Daredevil because he's very blind. Sure, then you'll okay. catch a series of objects that are thrown at him. Okay. That was a lot of the show apparently. That <laughs> okay, was, right. That was 18 episodes. He's at the bowling alley and they're like, you, you're a Daredevil. And he's like, well, I couldn't be Daredevil because I'm blind. You're bowling though. <laughs> you're getting strike after strike. <laughs> well, it's a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> so um, they're bringing showrunner Dario Scardapane, who worked on Jack Ryan, the TV series, okay. the recent one. Must be. There's well, only one Jack Ryan yeah, TV who's, series. Who's Jack Ryan at the moment? Is it no, Krasinski? what's his face? Yeah, it's John Krasinski. Okay. And he also worked on The Punisher, the Netflix series oh, as well. okay. And Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead, they're, du- couple, they're a couple of directors who – of. <laughs> Of recent, their co-directors, one of the things they worked on recently was season two episodes of Loki. 
There was yeah, some okay. Moon Knight stuff and some other things as well. Oh, okay. And I don't, I don't know if you've been keeping up with Loki, but I enjoyed the direction in Loki. Uh, um, I've only seen the first two episodes. Oh, my God, Mason, you've got to catch up on Loki. I've got to catch up on Loki. Also, pay attention because <laughs> last time I'm watching it, I didn't pay attention for a bit, and then I'm like, oh, fuck, I've missed a bunch of stuff here. Now, see, I – look, no spoilers because I don't really know what's going on. I'll tell you. I'll just tell you. Well, I've, I've seen – I'll just tell you. No, I'm I'm gonna, I was going to say no spoilers from me. Oh. You can whatever. But, <laughs> but uh, the, the reaction I've seen on Twitter is some people going like, you know, it looks like a really nice show, mm. but some, a lot of the episodes thus far seem sort of unconnected. Yeah, I'd agree. That's true? Uh, uh, okay. No, I would say they're unconnected. Well, all right then. But they are connected in some way. Like a lot of the characters from previous same episodes actors? do reappear. Yeah, nice. Okay. Apparently, well, they've said, like, the people associated with the show, that the last two is really going to kick off. Oh. But I, I haven't disliked it okay. as of so far. But again, I missed a bunch of that last episode, so I'm going to have to it's, probably rewatch it, or at the very least, start the next episode and watch the recap really closely. Yeah, very closely. Yes, that's cool, man. All right, we got one more bit of news. Anyway, it's good that um, Daredevil has directors and a guy running, <laughs> and it's it, not so. boring. It's, <laughs> yeah, or it's it has the potential now to not be boring. I hope they because l- before it was directionless and boring. <laughs> I just I, I made that stuff up. The oh, bowling thing. Oh, what the bowling thing James, is true. We though. are all about. <laughs> we are all about truth. In media. Are we? I think so. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, with you. Except when we do a joke. Were you doing a joke? Yeah. I don't, yeah. Um, was I? Ha <laughs> ha, good stuff. I don't know Great what's, work. I'm lost, Mason. Great. I feel like I'm watching that episode of Loki again. I've, yeah. I've missed some things. We'll do a recap later. Just pay <laughs> attention to the recap. <laughs> but they should leave in the bowling scene, right? Yeah, absolutely. Couldn't possibly be there, Devil. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, last bit of news. Inside Total Film Podcast. You're just watching an episode of television and you're telling me what's happening on the screen. <laughs> The sound's off. How are you doing? I, I'm not really watching it. I've seen it before. What do you mean seen it before? Ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 then he bowls another strike. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Inside Total Film Podcast, they spoke to David Yates. David Yates, you might know, directed- Dude, Bullet. What? He directed Bullet. Did he? No, I'm thinking of Peter Yates. Never mind. <laughs> Who's David Yates? David Yates directed a bunch of Harry Potter movies. Oh, okay, right. And the three Fantastic Beast movies uh, and other right, movies. Right. Let me check. Okay. He's a British director. Mm. Um, I think he, he directed some good Harry Potter movies, actually. Like, and I think of the Fantastic Beast movies, his direction is not the problem with those movies. I understand. It's they, they're a fucking mess mm. and they're boring and weird. Yeah. Yeah. He's almost, okay. So he's done. He did the Titchborn Cl- Clam Clement. Sorry, in 1998. Clement. No. Oh. And then he did. Bearing in mind, we're all about truth over here, James. Okay, yes. That's and then I he thought. did Harry Potter 5, Harry Potter 6, Harry Potter Part 7 and 8, The Legend of Tarzan. <laughs> Harry Potter 7 and 8, Harry The Legend po- of Tarzan. Yeah. Harry, a fantastic. That, that's a heck of a movie. Did he do I thought fucking, what's his name did Legend of, I thought it was a, oh, no, I didn't. I thought it was the guy who did Goldeneye. I guess it wasn't. And then he did Fantastic Beasts 1 to 3, and then he did Pain Hustlers. Oh, sure. Which I guess is why he's on the circuit of what's going yeah, on. Yeah, right, 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 right. I haven't watched Pain Hustlers. And he's like, I, I, you know, he's, he's like, well, I put a lot of myself into this uh, TV series and, you know, people really responding and I think it's the best work I've ever done. Yeah, but what about Fantastic Beasts, though? Fantastic what about Beasts? Fantastic Beasts? Who's the real? What's, um, who's the real Grindelwald? What's, what's Newt up to? What is Newt up what's to? Newt, what's his favourite colour? Who's your favourite Grindelwald? Is it is it Colin Farrell? Is it Johnny Depp? Or is it Matt Mickelson? Which one is it? I don't know who any of those people are. Yeah, but if you had to pick one, what would you say? What was the last one you said? I said uh, Mads Mikkelsen. Yeah, great. Okay, whatever. Oh, yeah? Because yeah. they, they, some people weren't happy about that because he took over the role from Johnny Depp. And they said justice for Johnny Depp or whatever. Oh, I'll be honest. I was only really on set for one day a week. I don't really know. <laughs> and it was a weekend. Yeah, I just I just told them to put the cameras just around. Where, where they needed to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Point yeah. of it. Yeah, if yeah. they're sitting at a table, point them at that. They're yeah. flying a horse point at that. I'll be honest, when when all the actors came to set, they were all wearing full body green screen sock <laughs> unitards. So I don't know what anybody looks like or who, who was on there. And then they fixed it in post. I don't know. Well, they didn't fix it, but uh, no, they, no. <laughs> it came out. Yeah. Anyways, he was asked about the Fantastic Beast franchise because we all know that it stopped short. Yeah, it sure did. It was apparently also J.K. Rowling announced five movies and that nobody knew that. Oh. Like, oh, is it? Oh, is it? Are we doing that? What we're doing? A little bit of confidence there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he said, we're also proud. Uh, of Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore. That's a ridiculous thing to say, by the way. Yeah. Let me just say that off the bat. And when it went out into the world, we just sort of needed to stop and pause and take it easy. Mm. The idea there was going to be five films was a surprise to most of us. Here we go. That's the thing I said. Joe was, had mentioned it spontaneously at a press screening once. No one had told us uh, there was going to be five. We <laughs> had committed to the first one. Joe, at some point, will be back. Mm. But, yeah, mm-hmm. I haven't spoken to Joe. I haven't spoken to David Heyman. I haven't spoken to Warner Brothers. We're just taking a pause. This is dead. Oh, yeah. 
Um, yeah. I mean, again, you should have picked. We've talked about this multiple times. You do magical goof and his magical animals, mm. or you do World War II wizard Hitler. Yeah, you, you can't don't have do both. both yeah, man. Yeah. You can't have both. You can't have two great things. That's true. You can that pick one so great true. thing. Mm. So there you go. Are you yeah. surprised or shocked by Not at all, no. Because we already knew this the second we, we absolutely, came out. Yeah, yeah, that's mm. right, when that last one came out. I reckon I could see like one more standalone with yeah, okay. um, what's his face? Uh, Eddie Redmayne? Yeah. Yeah, I would say I'd, I'd, I'd say I'd watch one. I'd watch one for this podcast. I wouldn't watch one <laughs> of my own volition. But if they yeah. were like, you know what, we're going to do one and it's, just, it's not going to be to do with, world, you know, we, we'll say the World War II thing has all blown over. It's fine. It blew over. It's, it's certainly fine. And, it, and it's like the 1950s in, the, in England and he's just having a magical adventure and he's finding some fantastic beasts or whatever. Oh, that'd be great. I'd be like, that's cool. All right, great. Do you reckon he'd be present again for when the horse pick, magical horse picks the next president? Do you think he'd be around for that? I Think. What a world where a horse picks the president. Yeah. The horse should go to jail. I reckon yes, but it's it's the zombie horse right. and it's rotted even further. So it's just like a pile of It's really obvious. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. It's just <laughs> just a pile of twitching gore. <laughs> and it's like the horse has picked the guy. <laughs> and they just scoop it up with a shovel and put it in a bin. <laughs> Great. Do we move it along? Mm. Now it's the spookiest time of year, Mason. Uh, go on. Go on, no. And um Wow, not committing to it anymore. Maybe it's over. Forever? Just for this year? I don't know. Wow. Yeah, who knows? I forget. Are you, are you, have you lost motivation now you've learned how many nations do not share our October 31 tax time? No, 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 no. I think that makes it more interesting. Are you, have you lost motivation because you've learned that some nations do have our October Maybe that's 31. what it is. It's got and a wider you, reach than I thought. Yeah, wider reach. Now you're not interested. It's got actual practical application. It's not a niche <laughs> local reference anymore, so you're not interested. <laughs> I thought it was underground. Yeah. Anyways, we're going to talk Sorex and then we're going to talk Five Nights at Freddy's. Let's talk Sorex first. Two I'm... movies, James. That's right. With a fascinatingly large amount of lore. A baffling oh amount of God, lore, I would say. You are not wrong. And initially you might be like, oh, is it Saw that has the most lore? No. Saw lore. Yeah, You're wrong. It's, lore. it's Five Nights at Freddy's by a... Slaw, Mason. By a slaw. <laughs> by, a, by a bloody a big margin. A country huge mile. Mar- country mile, exactly, yeah. So just quickly, on a budget of $13 million, Saw time of recording has made something like $78.7 million. Big success. They always do How much well did you say? 78. 78.7. 78. Okay. Good, 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 good. It'll, oh, it's on streaming now, but it'll, it's good. It's a pretty good, good deal. I don't know whether that's US. It's fine. They always do well. Yeah, yeah. They've got, they've got a good, strong audience. Mm. Also, you call it something like Sorks. And people yeah. flock to it. Big year for X movies. Yes. Sorks. Mm. Fast Sorks. Yep. Fast X, whatever yeah, yeah, it's called. Yeah, yeah. And is that it? Um, Jason X was that this year? That was this year, yeah. <laughs> okay, Jason cool. X, uh huh. Triple X was that this year? Triple X two? Yeah, that's was a that lot of X's. Year? Was that this it? year? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Film with Ice Cube. Yeah. Do you want to think of another one? Killers of the Flower Moon X. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That was this year. That was this year. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um. So this one was directed by Kevin Grutert. He directed Saw 6 and Saw 3D, but he's also... The question mark isn't his. I'm sorry, I didn't pronounce your name properly, but he was actually the editor on a bunch of the Saw movies, including the first Saw movie. Oh, so he's that's the first one in the series. That's right. He's returned but to direct... But not the first one in the chronology? No question doubt. Question mark, or is it? The Sawology. Mm. Among the Slaw. Yes. Um, the Chronolus Saw. <laughs> this one... I think does a good job of being like you don't really need to know all of the saw law. Yeah, so true. then there's some things in shop. Slaw, like, please. The slaw, thank you. There's some things in shop. You're like, oh yeah, I need to know who that is. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. But also, what do you think the story was? Oh, come on, mate. All yeah, right. man. So this movie. Yeah, man. This movie is mm-hmm. set in between Saw and Saw Two. Yep. In fact, it, I, I read an article that where, where somebody involved, maybe the director's it's name, the we can't real pronounce, Saw Two, was like it's set three weeks after Saw. One. Oh my god. So it's said in about October of two thousand and one. And I just want to be I just want to point this out. Yeah. I think it's important that uh at one point John Kramer sends an email and he's got a Gmail account. Gmail was started on, in two thousand and four. Come on, John. How'd you get that Gmail account? Well he's a genius. Yeah. That's but that true. I mean he makes puppets. That's true. And spike pits. Yeah. And a lot of machines where you have to weigh your own bits of your body yeah. to stop a clock. That's right. A lot of the traps were that. Yeah. Let's be real with each other. Yeah, he needs to. Well, see, here's the thing. I think. Look, we'll get into it, but I think he, you know, he was improvising in a in a new location. That is fairly limited resources. Home Alone too. It is. He's in a new place. So I think he probably had to be like, "What do I have? Oh, I've got I got that scale. Yep. So I'll uh, I'll I'll work. What do I have? I've got this big crate of scales. Yeah. Uh, What do I have? Uh, An office. I guess I could fill it with poison gas. 
Can I make the roof come? No, I probably can't make the roof come down. Mm. That's too hard. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Anyway, what do you think the story anyway, was? Anyway, oh, come on, mate. Uh, the story. Woo! You, it's, it's, it's set after. Here it goes. It's set after saw one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. That's hyping me up, but I'm loving it. Uh, uh, it's set after saw one. And uh, John, if you recall that the in Saw One, the reason uh, John Kramer's gone off his rocker is he has a brain tumor and he sucks. Yeah, and he sucks. Um, but in this, but he one, has a code, but it doesn't make him better. It doesn't makes make, him worse. And sometimes it doesn't really apply. Yeah. And uh, anyway, uh, but so uh, in this one, uh, he learns of an opportunity where uh, a, a a doctor, like a specialized doctor, might have a like a, a new un unapproved technique yeah. to cure his his brain cancer. And so he goes on the cutting edge. On the cutting edge and he goes uh, to to Mexico to make that happen. Uh, but then all is not what it seems and he's got to get big time revenge. That's right. Yeah. Classic boomer move falling for an obvious internet scam. <laughs> Let me just say that, Mason. Yeah, yeah. He should know better. Uh, but I mean, no. This was back in the day, though. This is 2001. No, man. You know? Guy like this, come on. Wow. You got to be smarter than that. <laughs> well, yeah, he's spoke allegedly a genius, isn't yeah. he? This guy, yeah. Doubtful. So here's the thing about this movie. I was sort of under the impression that this movie was going to be an origin story for Jigsaw. Is that Jigsaw. the impression that you got? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. You mighty, gonna... mighty boss tones. Yes. That... I thought this was going to be a mighty, mighty boss tone situation, but it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't. Mm. I mean, they touch on his origin in other movies, right? Yeah. Of, of, where he's younger, he just has a backward baseball cap. I that's think that's true, the yeah. classic John Kramer look. Mm. Um, yeah. I, I mean, Tobin Bell, very good. I agree, yeah. And I think uh, a strength of this was that you see a lot of him – and a lot of his actual interactions with people, he's not just, it's not so much about the people, the contestants, if you will. Yeah. He gets a lot of play. And I think that gives it, makes it an interesting um, wrinkle. Yeah, he's not just a... They missed uh, a trick not doing There's no this, wrinkles, James, because it's 2001 and he's looking smooth as silk. Fresh as hell. He must have just given up his backwards baseball cap, mate. That's right. Um, but yes, but yeah, so he's sort of the primary protagonist. And yeah. so it's a, the new take isn't just a bunch of strangers who is sort of... You know, sort of. He's oh, that he's um, <laughs> going on. Um, that you know, they're not just people he's heard of. Yeah, you know, it, out in the community who he feels haven't he did uh, a thing. He they did a thing he didn't like. Like a bit. exactly, these people are all. You tried to kill yourself, and you should value your life. So why don't you cut off your own feet? Or I'll shoot you with this big shotgun. <laughs> Or Amanda will That'll show up and you shoot you with a big shotgun. Alive, yeah. If you get past the big shotgun, Amanda will shoot you with a big shotgun. Um, uh, but yeah, but it, but it's people who are sort of intimately connected with, like they, they have wronged him. So yeah. in a way, this is kind of a revenge move. This is like your classic revenge movie. It is. Um, except you scammed a lunatic. Yeah, that's exactly right. Mm. And yeah, I, I was sort of under the impression, like, again, going into this, I thought that it might be a the case impression of, that you got. Yeah. It would be that brr, 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 would be that. He this was the he was a normal man up until oh, they broke him. They broke him and that's turned him into this. But but he was already the saw killer. He's already saw man. Yeah, I think he's got too many things. As in, he's got the puppet. Yeah, and he's got the pig mask. Uh, yeah, you've uh-huh. got to kind of p- pick one. I think mm. you can wear the puppet mask, and that's enough. There's also moments in this movie where the characters in the saw traps play the little r- tape recordings, but he's just in the other room. Exactly, he's just there, and they can see. Him. And they're like. I don't want to play this. And he's like, I'll just explain it over the microphone. Then <laughs> right, too. Yeah, yeah. Do, I, do I have to do the voice? Do the voice. Yeah. <laughs> do the voice. Do the saw voice. Woo. Yeah. But anyway, what I liked about it, I did he's like. He's famous. <laughs> I did like the, the kind of, yeah, like the immediacy, like the, um, you know, that, that they are, you know, they are directly responsible for. Yeah. For, the, for this thing. They are, you know. Their own demise. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I like that. The personal element of, I think, it worked. I, look, we've seen one to three and Jigsaw. Jigsaw? And Spiral. No, Spiral. I haven't seen Jigsaw, but um, or maybe I have. I don't know. I've seen one to three. I didn't really love Spiral. Mm. And I think they. I've seen one to three and the one and Spiral and the one before Spiral. Sure. Yeah. Pre Spiral. But I couldn't tell you anything that happens in that one. You don't need to. Yeah. But, um, or in the previous ones, honestly. Yeah. And they've talked about how it was a mistake killing him off because they'd bring him back in a lot of flashbacks and yeah. stuff, or he'd booby trap his body, or he'd be like, some of them were set before other ones and whatever. I don't they know. Increasingly, they increasingly. They. Booby Trap is increasingly destroyed body. <laughs> they just put a landmine under what's left of him. It's 2023. They've just like. <laughs> oh, my God. Is it the saw kill? And it's just, 
just a hand. Could That's be. all that's left of him. Yeah. yeah, it gets sort of it gets increasingly less credible the, the way that he can return, and whether it be the most, in flashbacks or yeah. like he's left recordings behind or, you know. He's the most interesting of the Saw killers because there's multiple ones yeah. as mm-hmm. we find out. Um, do you want to just do spoilers, I think? Because we've got to talk about the traps. That's true. That's kind of a I mean, gen- look, generally speaking. Um, I liked it. Yeah. And like I said, he's sort of, they're not. I think it's the second best of the ones that I've seen. Interesting. What's yeah. the best? The first one. Oh, of course. Yeah. Uh, I think they're, they're pretty good. They're, you know, suitably gory. Again, he is working with kind of, in a lot of cases here, he's, he's working with kind of, uh, mm. he's improvising because he doesn't have his regular workshop, He's only I guess. got a bunch of levers and pulleys and, yeah, and yeah, weighted yeah. systems. Yeah, so, so based on that, that's pretty interesting. Um, I like, you know, what I think it set up was a good, um, was a good rivalry between himself and the doctor, yes. like the main doctor who Which she could come up. She, maybe she again. is the she is the she is a doctor, and she's the doc. She's the daughter of another doctor, and who, who supposedly and allegedly came up with mm. these various this this technique to cure this cancer. Yeah, and so she is a sort of she's a sort of intellectual rival to him. I think like yeah. she's she's got a. What I liked about her is she wasn't just like. Oh, like a lot of the, like you said, a lot of the saw victims. It's like, oh, my wife died and I'm sad and now I'm in a trap or whatever. Yeah. It felt like she had like this, like this inner life to her. Like there was, there, yeah. she existed way before the movie. She's you been know. doing it. She's been doing it. She's doing, doing her thing, you know? That's right. Mm. I got that impression too. Yeah. That was the impression that I got. Uh, anyway, I, I quite liked it. I'm going to say best movie ever. I'm going to say best Bearing movie in mind, it is a saw movie. So take, like, you need to know <laughs> that, obviously. Yes, uh-huh. This is not like body horror. There is mm. some pretty horrific moments in this. Like you see a lot of it. Yeah. So in some of the other ones, I think in the first one, you know where he saws his leg off. You don't. Re- you don't see. No, that's true. It, but in here, there is a moment where someone saws their leg off, and boy, do you see it. Boy, you do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll wait to it like a leg of lamb. Yeah. yeah. Um. So big time spoilers. It's time for spoiler yeah. time. We're in spoiler time. T- spoiler territory. Did you say best movie? Get your compasses out, folks, because we are venturing into spoiler Why territory. Not? Best movie. Yeah, best movie ever. I would also say that it's interesting because he deserves. To be scammed. Oh, yeah, but right. But they're like, they make the bad guys so, like, reprehensible that you're on his side. Mm. Like, he's a fucking monster. He's a ghoul. I mean, he's on the, I'm on the side of some of them. Oh, yeah, it's true. Like, the main one, I should say. Yeah, I guess, but, like, sense. you know, like, there's um the the lady who um she claims a life's been and she's sort of just like an assistant character. Yeah. But I think, but she, and she's, you know, she's out at the club a lot, and I think she, she feels like just a person who's kind of, um, just a victim of circumstance. I kind don't of disagree thing, with you know? that. Yeah. Uh, same with like there's uh, there's like a taxi driver as well. Yeah. Where I'm like you know. Yeah. But Probably a lot of these got two hundred bucks. You know. Yeah. Well, exactly. Yeah. To yeah, do yeah. this thing. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, uh, in terms of traps, the first one we see, which isn't actually real, that was interesting. Which, which is the one on the poster, <laughs> because we saw it. It's the it's the on the on at least one of the posters. There's the. There's they come a, up with the trap first or yeah, the poster first. Oh, that's a good point. I reckon somebody came up with a concept art first yeah, and then okay. they were like, okay, how can we fit this in? And then they were like, we couldn't. Yeah. So, but it's, it's, um, the, the poster is a, a, a man's face and there's some tubes leading to their eyes. And we were like, is that going to be acid? It's going to be rats. Yeah. What is it? Turns out we were wrong. It's just suck your eyeballs out. It's a vacuumized situation. But it's not even a, what, no. what, what, it's interesting because it's in the opening sequence. John Kramer is in the hospital. He's received his diagnosis that mm. he doesn't have that long to live. He doesn't love that. Yeah. And there's like a, um, what would you call it? An orderly, orderly? an orderly, Maybe. yes, good word. Yeah. Uh, it's an, an orderly is there, and he, in, in another patient's room, and it looks like he's about to steal somebody's kind of watch. A patient and, who was dying, and, yeah, yeah. And, and in a coma, I think. Yeah. And and he this this orderly is about to steal this guy's watch and ring, and then it cuts to a sequence where we see this man in a saw trap, yep. and he has to he has to break all he has to turn a dial to break all the fingers on his other hand, yep. and if he does that, he's free, but he doesn't do it in time. So the he break you can turn it. Wait, each dial turn breaks one finger. Yeah. And, and if he's he does a minute. I would just crank that immediately. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. Do bang. it all in the one go. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. he doesn't make like it. Like sticking your hand in a car door. Exactly. Yeah, but he doesn't, and the machine sucks his eyeballs out. But then yeah. it's not real. And then it's not real because the guy <laughs> sees John Kramer seeing him about to yeah. steal the stuff and he puts it back and Kramer's like, good call. Man. Okay, a couple of things on that. Yeah. That's, I feel John Kramer would kill him anyway. That is a, yeah, exactly. That is a just absolutely on, fucking wild punishment for yeah. that. For a dude who's probably going to die anyway, a guy working a minimum wage job. I know mean, they kind of made it sinister and whatever. Yeah, right. But, like, that dude's obviously, like, 
hard up for cash in a diff- difficult job, John Kramer. Classic boomer move. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Just say that. Yeah, yeah. And- oh, well, I got a job as an architect straight out of school, <laughs> so uh, I don't know why this guy couldn't do that. Is that what he was? I just <laughs> walked into an Yeah, he was an architect and an engineer, I think. I do love his... You do, well, I just <laughs> walked into the architect's office and I said, do you have any jobs going? And they said, can you draw a line? And I said, maybe. <laughs> and they said, okay, well, you've got a job and it's $100,000 a year, <laughs> which was good for the 60s. Yeah. And I bought four houses that year. <laughs> So I don't understand why you can't do this, guy drowning in student debt. Anyway, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. I'm going to suck your eyeballs out. <laughs> God. And the other bit that I felt that was pretty impressive was that he came up with uh, broken fingers, vacuum eyes on the fly yeah. in the moment. Because the guy in the hospital bed had like a, his what, foot or his arm, yeah, I think, was, was, in a, was in a little yeah. kind of truss kind of a... And the eyes because he was, had, greedy, had eyes. greedy eyes. Greedy eyes. And I just You're going to lose those I also thought eyes. the hand thing was because he was stealing with his hands. Yeah. It was twofold. Yeah, yeah. But Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. But also like... That's interesting because it's an insight into his mind, which we don't really get. Yeah. we. I mean, at least in the movies I've seen. There is a bit where you it's see just his... what you... Yeah, Sorry, go on. It's, it, in, in all the other movies that I've seen, it's just, you know, we just see him build the stuff. Yeah. But I, in this, this is the first time at least I've seen him where it's like, oh, how does his mind operate? Oh, he immediately thinks of a deadly trap. Yeah. It, it, you know, I guess it's kind of relatable to like, you know, where somebody cuts you off in traffic and you're like, oh, oh, what if, I, I, pull just, what if I just crash yeah. my car into whatever? And it's like, no, that's insane. But he's like, no, I'll do it actually. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do all those things. I'll get some industrial strength vacuum cleaners. Yeah. Yeah, kind of wild. It's, um, what was I going to say? There was another moment also where you see an insight into, so after he thinks he gets cured, because they do a surgery on him, but it's a fake surgery. Yeah. He's sitting in the park and he's working on his sore traps, but he's not, his heart's not in anymore because he thinks yeah. he's been cured. He's going to turn over a new release of life. And you look at the thing and it's like a face trap or whatever. But one of the things he's drawn is just a big 3D cog. Oh. <laughs> like it's just like... Well, I'm going to need one of these cogs. <laughs> and I don't want to go down the shop. I don't want to go down to Bunnings. No. And, uh, and say... Can I don't I want, want to go to Mitre 10. I'm, I don't want to go to Mitre 10 uh, and, and be like, hello, do you have one of these cogs? And they're like, what kind of cogs? And I can't remember and I'm embarrassed and I have to kill that guy in a saw trap <laughs> because he had the temerity to ask me what kind of cog I would need. Yeah. So I have to kill him with a big cog or whatever, two big, push him through two big cogs, <laughs> crush him into a, into a paste. <laughs> and that's, but you'd have to also, before that, kidnap him in a pig mask. You'd have to do that. It's, true, <laughs> it's, part, of, mm. it's part of it. Well, you know what I, I guess I appreciate about this one is that People do have the opportunity to get out of these traps. Yeah. A couple of people do, like yeah. the taxi driver. What does he have to do? He God, has to. I don't remember. No, I'm going to remember this. But he does end up dying. No, he doesn't. He has to pull the, the bombs off out of his skin. That's right. Yeah. 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 Cut them off or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. The pipe because bombs. your car's a real bomb. Wow. So I'm going to put bombs on you. Yeah, that one yeah. didn't. Not his best. Yeah, because well, look, he's in the he's in the medical facility. And he's got a couple of scalpels. He should have done a meter. Should have had a little taxi meter, and he had to drive around on a little cart mm. and pick up. Drop off body parts. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and at the end, he's just a head and his mouth is steering the, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> the right. little car. Right. So he lives and so does the kind of the, the um, again, the woman who claims that she was cured and she's sort of like an assistant. How does she live? Does she get melted and then? Yeah, but she's, um, oh, yeah, that's a good point, someone actually. someone kill her after or something? I don't remember. Oh, no, she does die. Okay, yeah. you're right. The, the, the main but lady. But she does get The lady villain her. kicks her, crushes yeah. her neck. But she, yeah, she escapes. She she hammers her arms and legs until she escapes out of the chain so she doesn't kill by a big radiation gun. That's fun. That's fun. Which he had. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was in He's the... just working with what he had, yeah, a yeah. giant radiation gun. No, it would have been part of the MRI, I assume. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. So the scan that they run on him is a fake surgery. Yes. It's got multiple steps. The first step is that somebody he, that he knows has infiltrated his, like, cancer support groups. Yes. Uh, shows up and is like, I've got weeks to live, and then he runs into that person. Again, my happenstance is like, i got this medical cure. Then he looks up the person involved. There's a lot of very tenuous he emails things. using Gmail, which didn't, didn't exist, didn't exist yet. Maybe it did in the Saw universe, Mason. Maybe. But, um, and then he... Maybe John Kramer invented Gmail. Maybe that's maybe why. He did. Maybe he That's why he's got 250 grand to blow. <laughs> and then... So then he, re- and he quit because their their slogan at the time was "Don't be evil." Call. He's like, "But I want to be evil." I'm doing it. Yeah. So then he uh, rings the the doctor, who's a fake doctor, and <laughs> she talks him through the whole, the doctor talks him through the whole situation and flies him out, and they've set up this fake facility for him, and presumably they're running for a few people through this one particular facility because this is a very expensive scam to run. I feel 
for the like to to pull on one person. Mm. Well, see, that's the thing because there's a there's a moment in it where we see their wall of people they've scammed, and they got two hundred and fifty grand out of John Cramer. Yeah. So, you know, do you reckon like, just from this facility though? Oh, because surely they turn up after a week when they take the bandages off and they haven't been operated on. Yeah. You know? Well, see, I reckon if you like renting a place in Mexico, probably not that expensive. Sure. Like a, and then, like, if it's all, maybe it's if all. You get, if you're using local uh, local people, that's true. Yeah. It's going to be cheap, isn't it? It's going to support the economy, you know? <laughs> support that local economy, yeah. And I guess, like, if you buy, like, all, like, old medical equipment, like, yeah. d- like it doesn't have to work except for that radiation gun, obviously. And the DVD. And the DVD player, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That was fun. <laughs> Enjoyed all of that. I would have taken the DVD. Yeah. Um, I, thought, I thought you were operating on me, but you were actually just playing a DVD of The Matrix. <laughs> With the alternate angles. My God. You don't do those anymore, I do don't, you? Yeah. You don't do angles. Um, so let's talk traps. The first one is saw your leg off or I'll saw your head off. Yep. Um, she does saw her leg off, but she doesn't do it in time. Yep. It's not just saw your leg off. It's saw your leg off, put a needle into your bone, and then that will put bone marrow onto a lever which will stop your head getting sawn off. Yeah, uh-huh. And that doesn't work. Doesn't work. She I mean, gets, it would have worked. Yeah. But it uh, she doesn't do it in time and it, and it the wire cuts her head off. Correct. Pretty um, distressing, that one, to witness. I agree. Uh, then it was cut a piece of your brain out and put it in a jar and the jar has to be a certain weight or <laughs> I'll make you – or, or I'll, you get the hot face. Oh, yeah. Just like a toaster oven pressed against your face. Yeah. Felt mm. a little bit culturally insensitive. Yeah, but, Because was know, that Aztec I god? I think he was a, appealing to the <laughs> – I'm going I'm to give him a pass. Oh, wow, okay. Do you have that authority? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. terrific. Good, good to know. Well, no, no, the connection is that he saw it earlier. Like he saw the real one oh. and then I guess he got one. He got a small found one. one. He went to the gift shop, I guess. <laughs> but one big enough for a human face. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it was just whatever, what can I get that could close on a person's face? Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. Another one is. It's a microwave. Yeah, I guess, yeah. It's just ding. Another one is. Uh, this is where it's not just weighing stuff. Break your foot and your hand or you'll get cancer. Where you're hanging from oh, yeah. a, mm-hmm. a weight and you've got to yeah, yeah, break yeah. your hands and foot to get out of it. And then um, and what's crazy about that is when she drops down and then I think the woman kills her, right? The, yeah. the, and yeah. then Jigsaw and Amanda are so distraught. They're yeah. Like, How could you do this? Yeah. And you do you forget like, what, what you, you are? <laughs> Well, actually, you forget not, what you're doing. Well, actually, none of us kill anybody. Like, well, <laughs> yeah, we, we've we've done this dance before, haven't we, Jigsaw? And Amanda. Also, Amanda just kills people. Totally. Like, for, like as far all I really know about Amanda's character from the last from the few movies I've seen in her is that her traps are not intended to be escaped no. from. Maybe they maybe they changed after he died or something. Yeah, but I, I think she went off off track. I think maybe she went the, off track in this movie. Yeah, maybe exactly. that's why. Yeah. Maybe it was working with Becca. That made Maybe her was. so disgruntled. That's true. And then there's the blood seesaw mm. where you you put on a big seesaw with, with another person. In this, case, in this case, it's a kid. Jigsaw himself gets put in the trap. <laughs> also, the easiest trap for him. He doesn't get the saw your leg off, saw your yeah, head off trap. Right. Yeah, right. He gets yeah, yeah. the blood waterboard. Yeah. Also, and the idea is that if you can balance with the other person, you can both live, right? If you can both decide. No, I don't think it is. I think it's eventually one of you will drown and the other one will live. But that's not what happened. I think also eventually, I don't think he has that much blood. Where did he get all that Where'd blood? Where did he get all the blood? I, I mean, know. if it's blood, Maybe it also it's, might not be blood. Might be cow's blood. Could be cow's blood, yeah. yeah but buy a couple of cows in Mexico. I reckon you'd be like, I could I could out, I could could outlast this. Oh, yeah. I, think, so. of I, I think the premise of that one is that it's – because originally it was going to be the, the, the doctor and her – Boyfriend, yeah. Ooh. boyfriend, Ooh. boyfriend, big reveal. The big reveal of a co- is, of course, that one of the other people that uh, Jigsaw thought was being helped by this uh, yeah. this this clinic was actually in on the scam. He wasn't really wasn't really sick, and he was the boyfriend of the Ooh. doctor boyfriend. Um, and I think the idea was to put, it was going to put them into mm. because he was like, well, actually, you think you think you're all hot and hot stuff. You think you're hot and spicy? You think you're a big hot cup? You think you're a real Brangelina, mm-hmm. which would have been from that era, I think. Definitely. A bit um, before. Uh, but actually, one of you is going to betray the other one. And so the idea, I think, was going to be they'd put them in the thing and eventually they'd fight over this lever and eventually one would drown the other. And I think they'd then they'd let the other one go or shoot them or put them in front of a big radiation gun. Great questions all around. But, I mean, we'll never actually know because there's no – obviously the idea was it's, they're going to put – yeah. The writers were like, we're going to put Jigsaw and a little boy in this. So yeah. it doesn't really matter what happens afterwards. No. Um, so they end up in the office. And But fortunately, 
uh, J- Jigsaw learned one word in Spanish from that little boy, which was pull. Yeah. So he could teach him how to defeat the trap or whatever. Exactly. But then also uh, you could just get out of that trap because you could just open the, the manacles. We knew that, yeah. yeah. But I guess because he, he was waiting to mm. for them to go into the last backup track, mm. track, trap, which was if you go into the office and you take the money, it fills up with gas, but there's a hole in the wall. But it's acid gas. It's acid gas. There's a hole. But you're in... fine if you stick your head through the hole. Then you're fine. The... Yeah. And then you can, and then you live. Yeah. Which is what happens to the woman, and she lives to jigsaw another day. Oh yeah. I would say. Maybe. That's the idea. Yeah. It's like you won, I guess, by sticking your head through that hole in the wall. Mm. Mm, I wish it didn't come to this, but. <laughs> That's right. Technically. Kudos. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a man of my word, and I've never killed anyone. So. <laughs> good. Good work. Yeah, that last trap, and I know it's his backup trap, uh-huh. not great. Sure, right. It's no saw your yeah. leg off or saw your head off, put yeah. bone marrow into, onto a lever. That's true, That's yeah. my point, Mason. Mm. It's not even blood seesaw good, really. That's true, yeah. Yeah. And then there's a post-credits. Uh, well, there's a couple. Is there a couple or is it just one? There's one. Well, there's two kind of endings. One is you meet – no, no, it's the no, it's the same one. Yes. I'm thinking – it's, it, it does two things in one. So the guy who uh, told John Kramer about the trap, yep. I spent the whole movie going, what's going to happen to this guy? Was he legit? Was he on it? Was he in on it? But now he's in on it. Uh, and, of course, uh, Jigsaw catches up with him and puts him in a big trap, yep. which tickles his tummy. Yep. It's, a, it's the tummy tickler. Tickle, tickle, tickle. That's exactly right. But the one who tracked him down was, in fact, Lewis Mandylaw. Whoa, he's Australian, and also he's the third saw killer, maybe, yeah, or maybe. the second one, depending on the timeline. Maybe, line. but he's back. Yeah, man, he's back for the first time. But I think, if I remember correctly, he isn't introduced to like Saw Three. Yeah. So the so the idea you don't know he's the saw killer till a few movies later. Yeah. Or so the big reveal here is that Kramer was working with him for prior to Saw Three. He was worked with him three weeks after original Saw. That's exactly or whatever. right. Yeah. Wow. So when did they meet? Yeah. Great. And when did? Jigsaw start using the little puppet on the bicycle. Oh, yeah, that's a good question. I thought we were going to have the origin of that. Yeah. But but he's just had it. He should build it and then one of them's like, what's that? Yeah. What are you doing? I thought we were doing pig masks. (laughs) We can do pig masks and also it's all a vague, you know, it's the circus. What? You know, the circus, like a jigsaw. I know the circus, but what? Like Like a a jigsaw? jigsaw, Like a jigsaw, you know? Like a jigsaw. Like a jigsaw of a circus. Like, you know, you're doing a jigsaw and it could be anything on it. But it's a circus. It's the circus. And it's, is the on. picture is a a little puppet on a tricycle and, yes. a, and a man in a pig mask with a. With well, a no, because there's a little pen out the, out in front of the the circus. It's got pigs in it. You know how like that they do that. No. And also, I mean, I'm from a different era, so that you you're older than me, Jigsaw. Not yeah, by no, much. Well, I definitely did that. I'm <laughs> right. I'm not just misremembering things from my childhood. And it's always been this hot. People are always like global warming, but when I was a kid, sometimes it was 50 degrees for two weeks every day. And you might say, well, the Bureau of Meteor- Meteorology is always is, has all that data, and that's not true. But I remember it. And you're wrong. And if you disagree with me, data I'll, can be manipulated. I'll put you in a saw trap. <laughs> Anyway, this guy sucks. <laughs> yeah, he does. And he should be dead, which he is. Yeah, he's, yeah, that's true, yeah. How did he die? Did somebody shoot him in the head? I think he end? died of... No, we saw that movie, didn't we? He dies in three, right? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God, Mason. You know what this is? This is You know what I love about our review, James, that is good as far as I'm concerned? <laughs> okay. Is that it gives you the perspective of people who are not sort of wedded to this franchise. Yeah. And that's going to be especially apparent when we talk about Five Nights at Freddy's, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, I think. Yeah. But, but you, you, it gives it the perspective of the people that are in that room. Like, I oh, yeah, I know this guy. Yeah. He does the thing when the... Let me ask you this question. Whatever. It seems that the woman... The woman... She knew, knew him. She knew John Kramer. Did she know he was the jigsaw killer? I... Oh. Because why would you bring him in? She mustn't have known. No. She would have figured it Maybe out. Maybe she figured it out yeah. afterwards. But there, but but she's she has a sort of speech. When she's when she's finally captured him and Amanda, yeah. she goes, Oh, I'm John Kramer, the big jigsaw guy. And he's like, Whoa? Whoa? <laughs> you got me, huh? I didn't think anybody had figured and this out. It's like, dude, you're doing the jigsaw on them right now. Yeah, they yeah. obviously would have figured that out. You're doing the jigsaw as That's we true, speak. Yeah. So um but yeah, I like, you know, I like the bit where she was like, Oh, you think you're better than me, but I've jigsawed you actually. Yeah. But Maybe he, I'll do a jigsaw later. He jigsawed them though. Yeah. In the end, do you think there's enough time? Do you, do you think there's enough room in the timeline for there to be a that lady versus jigsaw? Absolutely. Like a saw eleven. Yeah, definitely. One hundred percent. This but, is the franchise now. But then you have, yeah. Okay, that's a good point actually, because I guess there's two options with that woman: is one, a jigsaw kills her in a subsequent movie, yeah, or two, she becomes a new jigsaw killer. My God. 
right? But an evil jigsaw as yeah, opposed like, to a nice jigsaw. Yeah, like an evil jigsaw as opposed to the um, <laughs> the sympathetic protagonist we had in this movie, which, who we love. We do love. Mm. Wow. What, what happened a- to Carrie Elwes's character? He, got, he became a jigsaw. Yeah, and then he as well, came back. He? Or I think he worked with jigsaw at some point. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember anything. Okay. It's, not, it's not important. It's not important. <laughs> no, I liked it. Yeah, I liked it too. Terms, in terms of jigsaw movies, this was one. Yeah, I guess the other, the last thing that I would, the last thought that I would have on this, the last what, piece of the jigsaw, the last piece of the jigsaw, it's the big top, <laughs> like a circus. Is it? Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, is. Oh, well, now I've lost it. Oh no, because obvi- the, the a lot you know a part of these movies is that we see the events unfold, and then it's like, how did you do the what? And then there's a the, the a series of small flashbacks. You see it, they're quite small in this one. Whereas uh, I think in previous ones, you know, there are entire segments that are huge flashbacks. But in how did you feel? Because I think the, yeah. the 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 what they have to be is they have to be satisfying in the moment where you go, aha. There was a piece of missing time exactly, there, yeah. and there was a jigsaw. There piece was a missing jigsaw, time and, you, and and when you know when this person you know bumped this, you know the person got bumped, and actually they put a phone in their pocket or whatever, and you know, I I don't think I was like fully satisfied with that. Okay, yeah, because there's a moment where it's like, how did the how did how did we get this last guy and put him in the jigsaw trap? And it's just Amanda takes the woman's phone and looks at it and goes, ah. The boyfriend That's how calling. We, I saw on the phone. Saw on the phone. I, I looked got his on phone the number Nokia. Now. I needed his phone number, and luckily, his girlfriend had his number on the phone. Exactly. And I'm like, that's not very satisfying. Perfect. Perfect. It is perfect, though. The perfect jigsaw. That is how you would do it in real life. Well, that is true. Yeah. But it so you would have preferred hacking or psychological warfare. Yeah, something maybe where so someone th- didn't look at a screen. Yeah, all those things. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. No, I see it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, phone book. He's in the phone book. <laughs> Because we have them now in yeah, the year yeah, 2001. They do, yeah, they're, yeah. Still, they're still happening big time. Oh, is that everything for this one? That is everything for uh, this let's one. Let's move it to next uh, Halloween. Time to move it to next Halloween. Now let's talk about a movie we weren't going to see, but then it came to streaming. And we're like, let's see it. Let's see it now. Right? Let's see it now. Let's see it now. I watched it this afternoon. Let's become instant experts on this particular franchise. Correct. And just, uh, you know. I think I'm going to cover it for Never Go Back and be like, we'll look at it. Oh, the and, original uh, video game. Yes, but only... Sure. Exclusively at BigSandwich.co. Oh, <laughs> you devil. Thank you. You devil. Anyway, it's the spookiest time of the year and it's not tax time. It is. It is in some places. <laughs> some places it isn't, though. Is this your new twist? Because you mentioned <laughs> earlier you were becoming disillusioned. No, I just kind of lost, uh, okay. lost my way. Okay. <laughs> Both in life and during that sentence. Yes. Five Nights at Freddy's, yeah. which is the long-anticipated adaptation of the video game. It's a video game movie. Whoa. Is it going to break the video game curse? I know, but a budget of twenty million dollars nice. over the three-day US week, and it's expected to make seventy-eight million dollars, and it also simultaneously released on Peacock, mm. and probably other streaming I think platforms maybe it's around made the world. More than that already? Yeah, probably is that. Well, I think that was an estimated. I think it's made. Tally. I think it's like a hundred million dollars. Surprise me! It's also impressive considering it did come to streaming. Yeah, true. And the reviews are like they're not great. No, I mean that. I I saw that as very much as a point of contention. This is yeah. one of those movies I think where the. You know, the people have gone, well, critics say this, but actually the fans have all, you know. Yeah. The, you know, the fans have been waiting, you know, for a... For a... But also, like, what are you doing with this? What do you mean? Like, what do you make out of this ga- game? That's true, yeah. Like, I think there's a lot of stuff added to this because you need to. Well, here's the thing about this. So so my ex- my exposure to Five Nights at Freddy's, I've never played it, the original game, but I watched a... Here we go. This will be good. I know, right? I watched a Halloween like YouTube stream of it like a couple of years ago. And the premise of the game, for people who don't know, mm. is you are a security guard at a, a, a place called Freddy Fazbear's, which is like a... Chuck E. Cheese. Chuck E. Cheese-style uh, pizzeria, and you're, you're the night watchman. Why would you need a night watchman? Well, because uh, at night, the animatronic... Um, animals that are in the the, the band, they mm-hmm. come to life and they want to murder everyone. Yes. So it's your job is you're in a security booth and you have to like open and close various doors to prevent the, the animatronics from getting to you. Mm-hmm. But every time you close a door, it uses electricity and you only have a limited amount of power and you have to conserve your power. And if you lose all the power before dawn, which is when you leave, you can't close the doors anymore and they come and murder you. Yes. And they murder you because you... They think you're an animatronic without a costume on, yeah. like an outer skin on. So they squish you so in So they one. grab you and they stuff you in one and you die. Yeah. And if you're like, well, that seems fairly simple, 
Initially it is, but as I understand the it, develops. there's been a subsequent, there's been many subsequent games. There's additional nights at Freddy's. Mm-hmm. There's additional, like, fa- Freddy Fazbear's locations. There's been additional games and books and, like... There's a movie. There's a movie they did yeah. called Five Nights at Freddy's. There's Willy's Wonderland, which is a different movie, yes. but it's, it has very similar elements. There's, of course, the Chuck E. Cheese franchise, mm-hmm. which was created by the guy who created Atari. Oh, wow, I didn't um, know that. Nolan Bushnell or the other guy? It doesn't matter. Anyway. Um, or another man. And maybe it was a different Batman guy. or another man. Maybe, a, maybe it was an unrelated guy. <laughs> anyway, but there's been so – there's so much lore yeah. now. There's been so many – so much, uh, ex, like, subsequent material about, like, why the animatronics act like they do and yep. – and, the people, the, the the characters behind There's actually it, a supernatural element, the, to it the as origins to, of the yeah, yeah, the origins of all the characters in it, and how they relate to each other, and there's all these mysteries. If anything, there's so there's there was way too much to put into one movie. Oh, okay, fair enough. So, Cohesively, yes, <laughs> yeah. So they strip away a lot of that, mm-hmm. or some of it at the very least. This is Emma Tammy's uh, movie. She's done a bunch of small indie horror stuff, including Blood Moon and The Wind, both of which are apparently very good. Um, what do you think the story was? Oh, come on, mate. That, before we do that. All right, little Josh Hutchison. He's back. He's back. Well, he was in The Hunger Games and probably other stuff. currently talking Hunger That's Games. That's exactly right. But he's back, and he's a he's a little guy who just can't get it together. He's always beating people up in public. He's a dreamer. He's a dream, yeah. Because because he had a he's had a, he's had a traumatic past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's just him and his his uh, his little sister living together, and uh, he, he, they're like, uh, you get a job. If you don't want to lose custody of your little your little sister, you've got to get a good job. And he's like, well, I'll get a job at Freddy Fazbear's. Fine, I'll get a job. Fine, I'll get a job. Matthew Lillard, can I have a job? He's Matthew like, Lillard yeah. says yes. You want a garbage job? And he's like, yes. 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 Anyway, he goes to uh, Freddy Fazbear's. Yep. And uh, meets a colorful, some colourful characters. and uh, Some of them are nice sometimes. And some of them are murder robots. Some of them are murder robots, yeah. yeah. And it um, all unfolds. i got to say, like... I'm not – I don't know much about this. Yeah, A lot of the research I did was like this afternoon for like how much of this is from the games. Yeah, right. This borrows a lot from the third game apparently, like the I supernatural see. elements of it. Mm-hmm. So I'm not really like a fan of the source material. I don't care what they changed. Mm. But what did work for me is I think a lot of the stuff that they did change, like Josh Hutchinson's character and the weird dream element because he was – his brother got kidnapped so he's trying to like re- dream a certain way so we can remember what happened to his brother. Hello, mm. Zippy. Oh, Ollie. One of them. It's Ollie. It's Ollie. Hello, Ollie. You, Ollie, you just Ollie, come in to sneeze. Ollie, you come in for a big sneeze. Oh, a big sneeze. Good word, buddy. I'm very impressed by the sneezes, Ollie. And I'm like, I like this guy. Yeah, right. And uh-huh. so that's the stuff that kind of worked for, worked for me in this. I think, on, I think honestly, like the human element of this, mm-hmm. I think is quite, it's better than it needs to be Okay. in a movie like this. But in terms of a horror movie, it's, it's all right. I think it's good for like... It's a good starter kind of younger kids' horror movie. I well, think. I mean, that's it. Like isn't a it? Goosebumps. Like, and you know, whatever, I, th- I you think know? a lot of kids have been waiting for a big yeah. screen adaptation of their but favorite now, and game now they're for a long time. Yeah, that's right. Um, but yeah, I think. I mean, I think that's you know that is um, you know a big contributor to the box office here and the and the totally. good user reviews. There's a lot of people have been waiting for this for a really long time. You know what? I I felt like some of the characters were kind of inconsistent. Is a supporting yeah. character who's like, hey, just um, just. <laughs> you know, have let's have fun in this pizza parlor. Yeah, and then then later, this character's like, "What were you doing in the pizza parlor?" <laughs> you said have fun. You said have fun. What are you? What are you, <laughs> you doing? You said that. You said that. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't disagree with that. Yeah. So there's like uh, this this uh, movie has you know it's it's Josh Hutcherson and the little sister, and then we've got uh, a local Cop. police yeah. officer. She's from you. The oh, TV the TV show, show you. you. Yeah, okay, the right. First season, and okay. In multiple others, bits and, uh, and we've got some local Elizabeth Lyle, yeah, and just some sort of local uh, youths, and uh, that's about it. It's a fairly small cast. It is. There's, yeah. a, there's a woman who wants uh, she wants, she wants custody. Child. She wants custody of the the little, little girl, girl for some reason that I can't recall. For money, for money, there yeah, it is, yeah. right? Okay, yeah. that's right. And uh-huh. I just, I also just wanted to mention that before I talk about the animatronics in this. The, so do you know how this game started? So I'm just going to read this. No, please. And then we'll just – a lot of I know a lot of people know this. Okay. Right? But this is this is for you and you alone. Okay, great. Uh, the idea of Five Nights at Freddy's stemmed from the negative reaction to Scott Cawthorn's previous game, the family, family-friendly family Chipper and uh, Sons Lumberco. Players said that the main character, a young beaver, 
looked like a scary animatronic animal. And reviewer Jim Sterling, who's now who's now James Stephanie Sterling, I believe, uh, who has her own YouTube channel, called the game unintentionally terrifying. Initially discouraged by the criticism, Cawthorn, who had previously uh, primarily developed Christian-orientated games, eventually used the feedback to make something intentionally scarier. So this started mm-hmm. as like... Spite. You, you just sucks and you made a weird thing. <laughs> yeah, and, right, and he okay. went, well, I'll show you a weird thing. Yeah, he's a weird thing. And I think one of the things also this movie does well is the live action animatronics and it mostly is animatronics it's jim henson's workshop also this isn't cgi some of it definitely is yeah right uh but really effective animatronics and people in suits and robotics and i think that stuff is really like one feels one-to-one yeah right i mean i didn't personally find them particularly because they don't talk obviously uh, but I didn't find them particularly memorable. But I'm sure a lot of people were well, like, a lot oh, of them I love have to like see personalities, them. and they kill in different ways. And one, some are more aggressive than others. But right. I like you. I couldn't tell you which specifically. Yeah, uh, like I can, like, that. like I could point out Freddy, I guess, from a yeah. lineup. But I, the other ones, I'm like, okay. Did you like the little cake one? Loved it. <laughs> yep, <laughs> loved it. Mm. Um, also, like I feel like. For, a, for a, a movie that has a lot of lore, you know, behind it and you can sort of pick and choose what stuff you want to use in this or what you want to ignore or what have you, I felt like it was a little – I feel like maybe even Willy's Wonderland did better in terms of establishing that. what yeah. the rules are for these sort of things. Like there needs to be an explanation, I think, as to why they can't just destroy them yeah. or if you don't have a security guard in there – what happens? They get out. Well, yeah. a, a can that because they can leave apparently. Oh, but okay. why don't they just? Because there's a there's a scene later where one of them's. Oh yeah, in a cab. In a cab, but there's also one in a house later, yeah. and it's like, okay, so do they do they regularly escape? Yeah. Why aren't they running rampant through the town and killing people like that? Because they have a goal in mind. Yeah. Uh, but. Why? Why are they? Why do they stick around? In if they can leave and like yeah. maybe they can run around at night. Why wouldn't they? Why doesn't? I'd love to run around at yeah, night. Yeah, 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 sure. I mean, and the the idea behind Josh Hutchison's character, who might might be named Brody, it's not yeah. important, but I'm gonna call him, I'm gonna call him Brody. He is the security guard because apparently the owner of the place, even though it, it's defunct and nobody goes Mike there anymore. Schmidt. Like I said, Brody. Yeah. Um, the the owner doesn't want to let it go. So yeah. it's still around. But I kind of feel like why doesn't there's a, there's murders? Yeah. But they're not being investigated. Yeah. Like there was in Willy's Wonderland, if you recall, there were a bunch I of murders of it. kids. Oh, okay, you didn't see it. But I think everybody was in on it. Yeah, okay. Like the the townsfolk. It was a local were cursing that everybody. Yeah, and yeah. the townsfolk were in on it and that sort of thing. So if you came from out of town yeah. and you got sacrificed, it was just like, well, we don't know. Yeah. But in this it's like, is just, nobody just investigating? Piling up there's, in there. I mean Look, with, without spoil, we'll get we'll get into spoilers in a minute. But at the end of this movie, you'd be like, there'd, there'd be people in the town going, "What happened to that person? Yeah, and this person? Why? You know, I, I feel like maybe the the downfall of this movie is you're not supposed to think about it until after you've left. Yeah, um, you your know? living room to talk about it on a podcast. Exactly, and yeah. then we get them. We get them. We em. got them. They'll Let's, never do a sequel after this because we got them so good. Let's do spoilers. Okay, so great. best movie, worst movie ever. I didn't mind it. Yeah. I, I I didn't love it, but I think some of the criticisms that I'm seeing, I'm like, I feel like if you're not a fan of the series, uh-huh. don't worry about it, yeah. maybe. But, like, if you are a fan, I know, is this enough for people? I don't know. Well, I, I would love know. to know I that. No I, also idea, think, honestly. I also think that, some again, some of the lore has been changed for yeah. this. So I'm not, there's only, I can tell you there's one specific exa- example that I'll talk about in a second because I looked it up mm. that seems to differ from, the game, and I and I'm wondering, yeah, I'm wondering if you, as an audience member, you like, why did they like? You know, it's like superhero movies or whatever. It's like, are you mad that they changed it, or do you just love that it's on sure. screen at this point? I uh, also just a couple of things. It's also gorier than I. would That's have what I was going to say. There's a moment old girl gets bitten in half, yeah, and you don't see it like a. It's mostly just shadow, but you you know you see like the legs fall to the mm. ground. Um, and I think the sound design is really good as well. I think they get all the creepy kind of vibes of yeah, the game. Right, uh-huh. What I know of this game, which is not much. Mm. It's, it's all about really, the sound. It's, and it's the... very atmospheric, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. found. Look, I'm going to say best movie ever. I didn't I, – look, I wouldn't – if I'd never seen it, I don't think it would uh, – you know, I wouldn't always wonder. No. But, and I, and I like, it, it, you know, I'm – I'm more compelled to see Willy's Wonderland after this, though, to be like, what's the difference between these and how does that compare? Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Look, I'll I'll say that um, I like Josh Hutchison's performance in this as the main guy, but I if if I had to pick a performance to watch over again, it'd be Nicolas Cage. <laughs> Just yeah. being a weirdo. It's been a weird fact, guy. Maybe I'll watch it tonight. Maybe you will. But yeah, look, I'll say best movie ever. Sure. With and, you know, those... I'm, and yeah, I'm, I'm glad. Again, as a kid's horror movie yeah. especially. If this is what the people wanted, the, the big fans of this series and all the lore and et cetera, if this is what they wanted, I'm glad they got it. And if it isn't too bad. Yeah. If it isn't they know bad. what it's like to feel to be us. Yeah. And be now, constantly disappointed. Now you know what it's like to watch Greenland 2011 <laughs> when it came out. Be like, oh, what? No. They were just getting good, these sort of movies. Sort of. Some of them were. Anyways, the twist is, spoilers, Matthew Lillard is actually the Five Nights at Freddy creator and he's a child kidnapper. And not only is he kidnapping child and their ghosts are now controlling the animatronics, which he mm. leads to kill people for he some reason. He also killed Josh Hutchinson's brother. And he shouldn't have done that. I think that's a crime, actually. That, I think it's a crime too, depending mm. on the state yeah. of mind. And if it's not, I reckon it's morally in a grey area. It's some, I think. To kidnap a child and murder them. frowned upon at yeah, the very yeah, least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the idea behind this is, so he, he's, this, this guy killed a bunch, he's kill, he killed at least... Josh Hutchinson's Brody's brother. Yeah. And then he killed five kids. He, he started the, the Freddy Fazbear's. He killed five kids and then they suspected it was – the police suspected it was him. Yeah. But they went and they searched through Freddy Fazbear's pizza parlor. They didn't find the five kids, but that's because the kids were stuffed inside the – What are you doing? That's the first place I'd look. Obviously they're in that. Yeah. <laughs> there's five kids and there's five of those. Yep. And they – They've got blood coming out of them, There's quite frankly. Some one of the kids is still screaming in yeah, there. Right. Pay attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there, but where does the magic come in? So that's a great question. So, but okay. Also, oh, this is the third game, apparently. The oh, okay, lore, right. This is where the law comes so from. The, so the so the the ghost kids. The the kids were stuffed inside the animatronics, which magically enables them, even after their deaths, to move the the the, the animatronics around. And they go. Ooh. But they've forgotten that. The owner of Freddy Fazbear's killed them. Yeah. So they do what he wants them to do, which is kill people. Or kill. But also they want more friends. They want is that friends. Why they're, is that why they want to kill – they want to kill the little girl. Brody's sister and stuff her in a – In a Freddy suit. In a Freddy suit so they have another friend, right? Yeah. But she – Realizes that they like drawings, and she can tell them things through drawings. Things through drawings. So, so she, at the end, she draws a picture of the Freddy Fazbear's guy killing the kids, and then they go, "Ah, oh, I get it. That's right." And then they Matthew beat him, Lillard, they the beat killer, him up. The killer from Scream One. That's right. He's still going to come back in further Screams. I yeah, feel. Yeah. Anyway, they beat him up. Yeah. But what was the law you were talking about, which is changed? Oh, so he's the he's in the yellow rabbit suit. Okay. And I'm like, is that the is that the revelation in the games? That it's this guy, but it's a completely different guy. Oh, okay, it's just a different, different, a different guy. Because I guess they needed more. They needed more animatronics for the subsequent games. Sure. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, so, um, yeah. I've just got a review here while you're doing that. But okay. Vinton says the suits for the animatronics were so well done that it was hard. Uh, that at sometimes I had a hard time telling if I was watching a suit or CGI. They picked mm. the perfect suit texture that animates well too. Best movie ever. Yeah, I agree. Again, I okay. Agree. I think the suits so the ye- so here's the yellow rabbit. Oh yeah, and I'm at the. F- Freddy Fazbear's fandom page. You would be. Uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. Spring Bonnie, the yellow rabbit, is the main antagonist of Into the Pit, the first story of the book of the same name. He is a demonic entity created by Eleanor. Oh, my God. And Eleanor, Eleanor doesn't have a clickable link, so I don't know who Eleanor is. Yeah, suspicious. Uh, he's a rabbit, blah, blah, blah. Spring Bonnie. <laughs> Oswald. He, he, Spring Bonnie appears during one of Oswald's visits to the pizza place in the past <gasps> through the ball pit at Jeff's Pizza. <laughs> You're just saying names of people. Something, something. Spring Bonnie seems to impersonate Oswald's father. What? Yeah, then Oswald sneaks off to Jeff's pizza. <laughs> Spring Bonnie and Oswald begin to fight. What? Yeah, with, with Oswald getting a few good punches in. That's good. Right? That's cool. Spring Bonnie manages to bite into Oswald's arm with his unhinged fanged jaw. Pretty good, right? Yeah. And then there's a big page about speculation, about <laughs> what the deal is, and there's a lot of links. I can't with this, Mason. No. I just can't. Balloon children? I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, he's not dead, so presumably yeah, he'll, he'll be, be back. back in the sequel. I don't well, know. he's somewhat dead. He can be a ghost anyway. It doesn't matter. Oh, yeah, that's true, yeah, because we've established vague magic rules. Do you like how the suits clamp onto you properly? Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it seems dangerous. Yeah, so does the mask that comes down on your face yeah. and it's filled with buzz sores. Yeah, that's crazy. I wouldn't put that on if I worked there. They'd nah. be like, do you want to put on this buzz well, presumably saw? Presumably the animatronic skeletons are in there, right? Isn't that the idea? 
Yeah, maybe. I don't know anything. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but anyway, I don't like know a, anything. Yeah, so at the end, uh, uh, Brody goes to Freddie Fazbear's to rescue his sister, and then the the cop, the cop who says that she was never going to help them comes back to help them because it turns out that uh, the Fazbear guy is his, her father. Yeah. But she comes in to, to fight him, uh, and then the day is – everybody gets stabbed and whatever, but then the day is saved because of the drawings. But then at the end – like there's been a bunch of people. Like the security guard died at the start. Mm. Um, Josh Hutchinson's aunt or whoever, yeah. she's dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and but he's like, everything's worked out perfectly. Has it? <laughs> Wait, Josh Hutchinson's aunt, aunt died. The woman with the, who wanted yeah. the kid. Oh, did she get killed? Yeah, one of the that? one of the. Um, oh, in her house. Yeah, one of the animatronics oh, yeah. shows up at her house. I do remember that. Which makes me question again. Yeah, did did it catch a cab? Why don't they just leave? Did it catch a cab? It would have had to. I don't know. I guess. <laughs> With money from one of the vending, from one of the yeah, arcade coins, machines, I guess. Tokens. Um, yeah. So they really again, but again, I guess it's a kids' movie, kids. basically. But like, you, they, we're just glossing over all these murders. You don't even put in a line where it's like, "Well, it turned out, you know, the, all the evidence pointed to a, a thing." So I got off the. Hook. You would assume, yeah, this guy's in an ongoing legal battle with his aunt for custody of his little sister, and then she shows up dead, and he's covered in like cuts and scratches and whatever. Yeah, you'd be like, "You killed her." Yep. You know? And that's probably true. Mm. It's not. No. But it's probably true. It might true. be. Maybe this is all in his mind. <laughs> yeah, he does like going to a dream palace. Yeah. Also, there's a moment in this where uh, he's the the aunt wants to discredit this guy, get him fired from yeah. this job so she can take custody of the daughter. So she hires some yo- local yokels <laughs> to uh, to go in and smash up the pizza parlor. Yeah. And then the cop shows up on, on his doorstep the next day and is like, well, these guys got in and that's your fault. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't there just be like a footage of him locking the door? Yeah, I reckon there would. Well, there, there wasn't. Is, wow, okay. there's footage of everything else. There is footage of li- there is literally footage of the front door. Also, was this set in 2001? Time. I don't know. I think it was. You reckon? I think they said it at some point, or I saw uh-huh. a date. Okay. Have you seen any cell phones of the of the modern era? No, I don't remember. When is Five <laughs> Nights at Freddy's? I'll save you some time, James. Movie you just type set. in F N A F. The internet knows. It's set in the early 2000s. Early 2000s. Anyway, let's move it along. What are we talking about? Uh, what we're reading. What are we going to read? That's correct. Maybe some people will be upset that we didn't hate it, but honestly, I don't care about Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> so I don't. Were, were it good or bad? I don't care. You know, it it didn't, doesn't matter to me. I liked the people involved, I guess. Yeah, yeah me yeah, too. Yeah. As I said, I got, that got me over the line. Yeah. And it looked good, I thought. It's good looking. Yeah, I, again, like if, if, if there is a reveal, you know, we see some behind the scenes stuff and most of the. It animatronics with CGI. It. Oh no! Well, I'd be like, is. "Well, good work." Yeah. you know, if they look pretty. Well, impressive. good work. It could good. work. It could work. Good. I'm doing the thing. <laughs> Anyways, what are you reading? Oh, uh, I have started reading. Dumbass. This will shock you, but I've started reading a Tom King DC comics Whoa, uh, uh, trade paperback. He made it. He made one of those. Yeah, he's made one of those. Oh my God. In addition to uh, what, what's he done? Mister Miracle, Superman, Batman, Human Target, Human Target, a bunch yep. of just a bunch of stuff. So I started reading uh, Strange Adventures. So it's Tom oh, King again, okay. Mitch Gerards, and Evan Doc Shana. Like or you tell me about this? Oh, uh, I don't know. This one's new to me. So this is about again. This is like a you know he he's, he does like he takes a classic. Usually a DC hero. He did the Vision as well. Yeah. And probably some other Marvel stuff. But recently it's mostly been Marvel stuff and he, he takes a classic hero and he inserts some bloody emotion and depth and what have you in it. I'm sick of it. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, but this is – so so this this is about a character called Adam Strange. He's like a – I would say like a 1950s – he's still around, but he was like, he's like a classic kind of 1950s DC. Like a Buck Rogers. He's like a Buck Rogers. Of. He's got a jet pack and a fin on his head and a yeah. ray gun and what have you. Like and a he, rocketeer. Yeah, like a rocketeer. So in the – like in the – he's a man from Earth and he got zapped to the planet Ran through a Zeta beam. That's illegal. Uh, it, it was, I assume. But then be, because the, the people of Ran needed help, you know, against, uh, you know uh, – uh, an alien enemy, blah, blah, blah. And then he he fights in the war and then he returns to Earth. But then it turns out that like the stuff that happened in the war, you know, he thought he was, uh, you know, he had the best of intentions but, you know, mm. he's, he's ruined a lot of lives and he sort of yeah. has to reckon with that, like the the stuff that happened in war. <laughs> and um, he does. And he did? And he's fine, yeah. Oh, he's yeah, all right, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The decisions Adam made during battles on Rand come back to haunt his family. 
It'll take an investigation by one of the most brilliant heroes in the DC Universe, Mr. Terrific, to uncover the truth and reveal whether Adam Strange is a hero or a disgrace. What is he? He's a bloody disgrace, mate. I like him. Bloody disgrace. Should I read this? Yeah, read it. All right, I'll do it. But I don't want to. But I will. Okay. For you. Great. All right. That's great. Is it the full thing? Is it out? Yeah, it's like 12. Thank God. I got the the bloody, got the trade paper back. Have you got the attitude? The right attitude? No. Oh. No. Um, I said this up top, but I've been watching Loki. I'm yep. up to date and I need to watch that last episode again. But that was the thing I was going to talk about and I already did. Wow. Well, what, anything else? What have you watched That's, on YouTube? God. What was the last Mr. Beast video we watched on well, YouTube? Well, he did a laser hole one I saw. A okay, what? A laser one. What and does also, that mean? He's going to get out of this laser trap. And we gonna, watched one. We, we, let, we, me we, tell you, okay. let me tell you about this one. You had the watched. controversy this week as well? There's a controversy that he did some sort of event where there were like – First, second, and third prizes with various influences. And it was with creators, yes. Yeah, and and um, and a couple of people came, th- I think, second and third place, but then it was edited to make look, it look like they'd been eliminated. Yes. Is oh. there no bloody justice anymore? Is there no re- – what happened to reality, you know what I mean? Here's something just quickly. Um, I finished Old Dads. It was fine. It actually okay, ended great. up being fine. Okay. Uh, not great, but fine. Did he go – I was actually doing a joke at the end. No, he didn't. I was actually doing – everything I said was a big joke and I got you. Also, Conan O'Brien did an interview with uh, Dave Grohl, Kristen no- Novoselic, and the producer of In Utero. Ah. Um. And they basically just talked through the process of making that and obviously a go. bunch of Kirk Main stories in the time they pranked Gene Simmons and all these different oh, things. Oh, nice. Uh, it's a lot of fun and just very insightful into that. And like, I love that like, yeah. era of music and mm-hmm. I like Nirvana, Mason. Wow. Call me underground if you will. <laughs> I, I will. I, uh, so wow. that's, that's one thing I would, I would watch and recommend. Oh, it's, there's, a, there's clips of it on YouTube. But it's, um, the yeah, actual right. full podcast is available. Is, um, is um, the guy from, uh, you know that guy? You know the guy? You know he's offsider? What's his name? Matt Gawley. Is Matt Gawley No, there? Matt Gawley's not there. Oh, okay. Yeah, well. It's just the three, four well. of them. Yeah. Well, there you go. I do like Matt Gawley, though. Mm. But we watched this Mr. Beast video. Okay, here we, we go. We watched two Mr. Beast videos. One was like a real grab bag where it's just like, we're putting a Lamborghini in a shredder or whatever. Yeah. But there was one video we watched. We're putting one was, of our friends in a bin. There's a guy. Yeah. And the, this, it's just this one guy. Yeah. And he was offered the opportunity to go through a series of, they were called traps, I think. Trap he had to rooms. escape traps. Escape trap he, trap they were rooms. really just like, like Run from obst- a obstacle courses, right? Jump over a and thing. And every time he went through, and es- every time he completed one of these, they were like, okay, well, if you complete one of these, you get $100,000 in, in a bag. Yeah. And you can leave with that money, or you can do the next one. And if you do these, you get eliminated. Like if, yeah. you, if, you, if, if you fail at any point, you get eliminated, you lose all the money. Yep. And there, were, there was 10, and he got through like, spoilers, he got through like seven of these. Yep. Very... Like, Handily? Very handy. I don't know what his deal was. Was he like a professional stuntman? I stunt have no man? idea. Because some of them were like, you have to crawl, you have to walk across this balance beam. But you're in a two, ball? It's 200 feet in the air. But you're in a hamster ball. Yeah, there was a hamster ball one. That, yeah. There was a run through a laser trap one. Yeah. But what was wild about it is. <laughs> Here we go. He got through like seven of them. Yeah. And then he went to the eighth one. And then they did the squid game. Challenge. The screw game challenge where you have to cut through a piece of honeycomb. But also on a piece of tempered glass that yeah. would break if you didn't do it or whatever. And then he failed and they're like, well, bye, <laughs> which was wild. Which I guess is maybe. I think it adds to the authenticity, the idea is at least that it's all real. Yeah, they, they're not just giving money away. Yeah. So basically they just get. I think they gave him 100 grand. Something like that, yeah. You know, as like a consolation prize, which is, you know, decent amount of money. But obviously they're filming this over multiple days. Nice chunk of change. Nice chunk of change, but it's not as good as. Yeah. You know. But maybe he's faking things. Also, let's be real. He's not editing those. I would say uh, who much, how much of the final output, like if this woman got cut out, uh-huh. I don't know whether he had any direct right. impact on that. Yeah. You know, like I didn't edit my own videos. That's true. And I'm not Mr. Beast mm. yet. That's true. I'll get there, won't yeah. I, Mason? Mm-hmm. So I, I'm not saying Mr. that like. Least. I'm not saying he didn't. <laughs> he didn't I, mean, I just thought of that now. Ah! <laughs> I'm not saying. That, I mean, she sounds like she was definitely. Mr. Def- Yeast. No. She's got I'm a not, yeast infection. I don't. I'm not saying that she wasn't screwed out of the, the like, the money or whatever. Like, that's Mr. probably Feast. true. Yeah. Balls. Yep. Sure. A feast of balls oh, yeah, yeah that's a good point, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. she was probably screwed like, yeah, oh, yeah. in that situation. But I'm, all I'm saying is his organization is so big that I yeah. don't know whether he did that directly is yeah, my yeah. point. Uh-huh. But they should reconcile, like, rectify that situation. I agree. Yeah. Anyway, anything else? Uh, that's about it. But I, I just think it's interesting that they've gone. I, I wonder if maybe because the, the the Mr. Beast channel seems to go from strength to strength. But maybe they notice like a fluctuation in viewership or something like that, and they're like, 
people are sort of running out of people don't yeah people are people are running out of enthusiasm for the idea of everybody always gets a bunch of money and blah yeah. blah because at the end Mr Beast goes did you like this like the, the, <laughs> he goes to the audience is like do you like this is this what you is this want you would? and I wonder if they're like yeah we you know yeah people want a genuine sense of like maybe everybody doesn't walk away with a big prize totally I think there's you cannot. I think it's smart to put something like mm. that in. So then, because the next time we'll we'll watch, there will be like, well, this could go That's south. That's true. This guy could be killed. I mean, we'll check the runtime. <laughs> yeah. And if it goes for 10 more minutes, he probably won't be killed. Yeah, that's if right. If it only goes for 45 more seconds, we'll know he gets killed. <laughs> I genuinely thought they were going to be like, we'll give you another shot. Because we also yeah. built three other traps or right? whatever. But yeah, yeah. Not the case. That's exactly right. Wow. Plus, he saved $700,000. Correct. Because you didn't have to pay that guy. You have to pay a goddamn mm, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And right. you got all that free entertainment out of him. That's true. That's pretty good. Do you want to do letters? Yeah, man, I do actually. I love that. <laughs> you love that about me? Yep. The classic one was letters, oh letters, we love you. Some letters, they're only a take away. I'm going to hear right now, we're going to do letters. Boom, boom. If you want to reach the show, hashtag weeklyplanetpod on Twitter or weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com. Do you have a letter? Not yet. I've got one from Nathan who says, hashtag weeklyplanetpod on Twitter. Are you guys going to watch the new Goosebumps show? I know you mentioned last episode for like 2.2 seconds and didn't. Did I, I read this one, didn't I? I think you might have. I did this one already. <laughs> I apologize, but no. Wow. Uh, maybe my kids are older. If my kids are older, I would watch it. Yeah, Here's that, one from Katie. That wasn't my era. What What did I read as a kid that would be like, oh. Spooky story time. No, I didn't like it. Choose your own adventure, obviously. Yeah. Uh, and then he had a hook hand. No, I didn't read and then he had a hook and hand. And then it was a ghost boy. No. And the famous five. When I was a kid, there, were a, bun- a there, were, a bunch of, of there were a bunch of novels based on video games. It was like a Metal Gear one. Oh, yeah. And there was a Blaster Master one and a Castlevania one. Ooh, Castlevania. They were, they were by an author called FX9, which I'm very confident is not a real person. Is not a real person, yeah. Okay. Uh, I believe you. FX9 is actually Judith Bauer Stamper. There you go. Okay, well, there you go. Now we oh, but know. She, she wrote a bunch. looks like she did write a bunch of spooky stuff. They were called Worlds of Power. Okay. These novels. Well, there you go. There you go. I've got a tweet here, just a nice little one from Katie, who says, I finally felt it was time to let you know that I run the comic book club at my, at my middle school in New, in New Jersey. Uh, but more importantly, to let you know, at the end of every club meeting, announcement, uh, there's an announcement of Grab That Gem and hope to see you there. Oh, wow. There you go. Bringing it to young minds. James, when I was a kid, I read the series Time Wars. Time Wars. Did, did you read Time Wars? No. It's by Simon Hawke. It's Simon great. Hawk. Simon Hawke. What kind of Time Wars did they do? I don't care. Oh. <laughs> no, come on. Tell me about your time. Wars. So the premise was, if I remember correctly, that in the future, rather than having wars like it, like and destroying the world, they would actually go back in time and they would participate in historical wars. Oh. They'd like send like token amounts of soldiers to be in like the Napoleonic War or whatever. Okay. And they'd be in a battle and then they'd be like, well, we won this battle, whatever. Like they're... They, right. they, they using battle. the technology of the era? Yeah, using the technology of the era. You wouldn't be like, I've got a laser. Yeah, you wouldn't have a laser. That'd be rude. Yeah. But then so like if, if more, <laughs> if, you know, if, if so the, the you know, the outcome of the battle was fixed, like because yeah. it's the past, but your two opposing nations would put soldiers in each right, side and okay. then they would fight and then it would be like, because then you don't disrupt the present day or whatever. Perfect. So, and that was, the, that was the basic premise, but then they would like, you know, like time guys who were trying to destroy the timeline or whatever. Typical. It was good. I yeah. remember enjoying them. Maybe I'll read one and they're bad. I don't yeah, know. Maybe you will. Maybe I'll read one as an adult and they'll be bad. Uh, just on the topic of Katie's um, book club that she's doing, comic oh, book yes. club. Have you ever been in a comic book or book club? No, just our comic book club. I know we have club. one, obviously. Mm. I was thinking about joining a book club. Oh, yeah. Independent of anything, I just Whoa. to join a book club because I've been trying to read more. Oh. And I don't know whether that's a terrible idea or not because I feel like I'd turn up first day and be like, I fucking hate this actually. <laughs> and I didn't read I the book. I hate structured okay. situations and I hate this. What would your ideal situation would, would be? Would it be read the entire but book? I'm the best then... looking one there. Oh, nice. Well, okay. <laughs> That's it? That's, yeah, all you, that's, that's it. all you want? Yeah, okay, right. Sorry, I didn't read the book. I was too busy in the salon <laughs> and the gym. What would be the best case, something, something? Would it be you go away and you read the entire book and you come back or would it be chapter by chapter? No, I think it would be like you read the whole thing in a month or whatever. Oh. So I, I wouldn't want to do it like weekly. I cannot commit to that kind of anything. I understand. Yeah, if that makes sense. Mm. What do you got, Mason? This is from George. He says George? you make my girlfriend fall asleep. 
Hi, James and Maceo. I love the show and listen to it all the time. I listen to the show when I go to sleep and my girlfriend has gotten so used to hearing it when we're tired, your voice makes her fall asleep in minutes no matter the time of day. Oh, thank you. Thanks for your years of making my week. From George, and he gives us a big thumbs up. Thanks, George. And yeah. thanks, George's girlfriend, who hasn't heard this. Yeah, she she's asleep. already asleep. She fell asleep probably welcome, an hour ago at least. Way. Yeah, you're very welcome. Boo! By the way. <laughs> ah! Get up! Get up. Listen to the Weekly Planet. You're the, late the, for work. Listen to the bit at the end of the podcast yeah. where we pick her out. That's right. Yeah. Don't do it while you're driving, though, because you probably fall asleep. <laughs> uh, anything else? Well, you do, do another I one. I did one. I said uh, that was it for me. I had oh, two and one of them I already read well. last week. I need more tweets, everybody. Oh, yeah. I know Twitter's a shit show. <laughs> I've noticed a lack of engagement, but yeah. if people could, that would be great, but you don't have to, obviously. This is from Jeff. Jeff. Jeff says five stars. Thanks, Jeff. He says, I recently rated you guys five stars. I'm currently going through my toughest time, and your podcast is really the only light in my life that keeps me on this path. You've made me think about starting my own podcast. You should do it. After you guys hit your 500th episode, I've gone back to the start and have been listening for episode one. You guys take some movies and banner back and forth is hilarious. I don't have funds right now for you guys' big sandwich, but when I do, right. I definitely plan on pulling that trigger. Have a good day from Jeff. We, we just want your $9 at least once. That's true. Yeah. I mean, it's so many. You, you probably, maybe, maybe your friends are big sandwich. Yeah. You could, you could listen on there. Exactly. But, I mean, if more than like if more than like two people do that, mm. that's technically a, a conspiracy. Yeah, that's so true. So we could bust you. We could bust you with RICO laws and you'd all go to prison. <laughs> I just so wanna, don't do that. I just want to point out we have wow, 1.3 million subscribers. On YouTube. And I'm not saying that reflects directly in the videos, but let's say it did. If everybody signed up one time, imagine that times nine. Imagine how many millions of dollars we have. Oh, my God. And then we could quit, which is what people want. Yes. But also I think a lot of people are – let me ask you this, James. Of your subscribers, how many people do you think are hate subscribing? Ooh, I don't know. The comments are generally pretty nice. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. And then every now and then someone will be like, that's actually the worst Spider-Man villain. We started doing tier lists and yeah, that yeah, certainly yeah. Bring, brought out yeah, some yeah. interesting Oh, uh, That's actually the worst villain, unsubscribe. Yeah. Uh, that's, you didn't talk about this particular and version. you should be ashamed of yourselves. Well, I am ashamed of myself. Wow. You can't make me feel worse about myself. Wow. Anything else, Mason? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I've got to get ready for Halloween. Ooh, okay. Uh, this is from Bradley. Bradley. Who says, you're the reason I haven't finished Harry Potter. You're welcome. Hi, mates. Congratulations on over 500 episodes. Oh, my computer died. Thanks a lot, Bradley, for dragging the show out. Now my computer <laughs> ran out of battery. God, Bradley. By the way. You could have delivered a charging thing, <laughs> couldn't you? The thing still records though, right? I don't know. Great. No, it is, yeah. Uh, hi, mates. Congratulations on over 500 episodes. I haven't finished watching the Harry Potter movies, and I blame you. Growing up, I wasn't allowed to watch Harry Potter for religious reasons. As I grew up, I decided to watch them two movies at a time and then listen to your episodes on them. Now I've seen six of the eight movies and refused to watch the last two until you release your final episode covering them. Yeah, we'll get there. I personally don't mind waiting, but my friends are furious that I haven't seen the last two. What makes it worse is I can't give them a good reason why I won't watch them yet. <laughs> Thank you, Bradley. I um, Yeah, we, there's no reason we haven't. I think mm. it's because they stopped making them. Oh, is yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> been a while it's been at least mm. like four or five years oh, and also all that stuff all the stuff that's going on obviously that's part of it i yeah. saw the thing jk rowling was like i'm happy to go to jail for misgendering someone it's like that's not <laughs> i'm happy for hypothetical scenarios that won't happen yeah same also yeah. I, yeah, yeah yeah i'd go to jail for a thing that would never happen yeah, that's right i'll go to jail for 20 years for it <laughs> if they say actually we're changing the rules so if you use the wrong pronoun you get 20 years of prison i'll do 20 years of prison i'll do it I'll do it if they do that. I'll do it too. Whether they do it or not is irrelevant. <laughs> Whether they, but I would if if they did. God, that's brave. Yeah, it's very brave. Isn't yeah. It? Yeah. All right, that's it. I assume. I think it is. Oh my god, I got to bring up the reviews on the phone like an animal. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what do you got, Mason? What do you mean? You to wrap up the show. Right? Oh, I do wrap up the show. That's true. Ooh, uh, one email. One email. Just before we go. Okay. This is from uh, Mike. It says Book Club. Oh, you asked for a Marvel event. And this is not that, but it's a good Marvel comic. Daredevil to No Fear by Chip Zdarsky is one of my very favourites. Okay. And the whole run is great. I'd love a book club on it. I love Chip Zdarsky. Me too. I think he's delightful. I don't know if I've read I've read Daredevil. some Chip Zdarsky Daredevil. Mm. I don't know whether that's Daredevil to one. No Fear. Okay, let's check that one out. I All right, cool. Love Daredevil. Love well, we that. are. There's Chip. some Daredevil coming up. What I like about Chip Zdarsky is he started out very silly. Oh. Like I know him traditionally from like – Funny comics. Yeah, okay, sure. Uh, but then it turns out he can write serious stuff very well as well. So that's cool. Man, I, I'd love to be serious just for a second. <laughs> James, your pants have fallen down and that's very <laughs> silly. Can everyone see my penis? No. <laughs> Thank God. No. That would be too silly? Yeah, that'd be very silly. They can only see your heart print boxer shorts. 
That's all I can see. That's all right. But, it, but it's, I just, it's just ironic that in your moment where you wish to be serious and taken seriously, yeah. your pants fell down. But I why is I'm... it in those situations, why, does, why are you even buying yourself embarrassing underwear? That's a great you know? point, isn't it? All my underwear, I feel. Yes. I'd be happy to show them to people. Wow. Like I'm not embarrassed by my underwear. Like in a, like in a photo album or something? Yeah, like in a photo you've, you've, Or you've, maybe I've sealed them up. you taped yeah. them into a photo album. And you know what? They get a tear, they're out the door. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't, be, don't be hanging on to underwear. Yeah, sure. Just move it along, all right? Mm. Yeah. Well, speaking of moving along, thanks, folks, for listening. We absolutely appreciate it. 500 and something episodes. Don't mind telling you. Wouldn't, you. Wouldn't, wouldn't, you wouldn't bloody believe it. You wouldn't read about it, would you? I agree. Not on a podcast, certainly. Thank you for subscribing. Yep. Thank you for telling your friends about it because that is how we get new listeners. And thank you for leaving a five-star review on your podcast catcher of choice. You can Sorry. do it in app. James has got some there. If you leave a five-star review, James will read it out on the podcast. Just like a couple here, just like Sony Boy 66 who said, jump the shark. James did, did his part to warn us about the new theme well in advance and it was still worse than anything I could have imagined. Otherwise, <laughs> this show has been consistently good since I started listening in 2013. Damn. One of the OGs, Mason. That's where we started. That's right, from Drew10799. It says, Snake Eyes Review. My uncle works at Big Sandwich and he told me that the Snake Eyes episode is under the truck. That's true, actually. That is very true. uncle's a very hard worker, but he does have a substance abuse problem. Yeah. Let's move it along, Mason. (laughs) Go on. Uh, folks, uh, if you want to get into contact with us, you can go to Weekly Planet Planet Weekly, Weekly Planet, Pod. Planet Planet. Now we have to get Wonkly Planet Plod <laughs> at gmail.com. Let's get Wonkly Planet Plod right now, brother. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Weekly Planet Pod at gmail.com. Uh, you can go to the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group. You can go to the uh, Weekly Planet Podcast subreddit and Discord. Damn. Damn, you can get in there. Thank you to uh, Fidel and Sarabi and Maisie oh my for God. wonderful jobs moderating the over kindest there of souls. and doing TikToks and uh, and Weekly Planet Clips channels and all sorts of stuff. Uh, you have some fun uh, civil discussion about That's podcasts right. and pop culture over, over at those places. Uh, if you want to follow some people on the socials, follow our friend Rob Collins who edits this podcast my and makes God. videos. Among and he'll keep else. you updated on all things The Weekly Planet over at Raw Collins and over at The Weekly Planet. You can follow me, Wikipedia Brown, on Twitter and Nick Meso on Instagram. James is Mr. Sunday Movies everywhere. If you want to support the show, if you're one of those 1.3 million people who doesn't currently Consi- support us, yeah, consistently. be on subscribing. Yeah. Uh, what you can do is you can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies, chuck in a buck or an amount you would not miss, or you can go to bigsandwich.co for nine US dollars per month. You go get a bonus podcast and movie commentaries, early videos, uh, video game let's plays. Oh, my God. There's so, so many, many hours, things so there. So many hours yeah. of stuff. Also, if you subscribe on Patreon for $9 or more, it, you, get, you get the same thing. You get kicks the same o- thing. Kicks over. That's exactly right. Uh, thank you to the Brit and the Basilisk and Rack and Prool, our musical theme. That's right. T-shirts are at tpublic.com. Search for The Weekly Planet. That's right. Next week, you well, we may be doing that MCU book report thing. Is that a thing we that might We could do that, happen? but you know what else is out next what? week? Mm. Captain Marvel? Cap- was that week Captain Marvel's the ninth, so hang on. Let's look. We've got a Captain Marvel or commentary that's coming out next week, I believe, as well. Okay, so one. yeah, Captain Marvel will be the next week. Yeah. So the the... the the week of the 12th, that'll be Captain Marvel. So we'll figure out something for next week. Yeah. But also that week, The Killer is out. Oh, okay. It's out yeah. on. It's out in cinema right now. It's, it's one of those Netflix limited releases yeah, yeah. like Glass Onion. So it's. I didn't even know it was out here. David Fincher. Yeah. And I, well, it was out in I think it'll be cinemas. out for a week probably. Okay. We might see that. We could see that in advance. Maybe. All right. Yeah. See how we go. When does it go to Netflix? The 10th. Okay. All right. Well, all right. We'll start and do yeah, that. Yeah. Okay, great. All right, thanks, everyone. Grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Goodbye. Am I dabbing?